Okay. Henlo Strim. All pumped up and ready to go. Oh, except for twi uh, Twitter. I should probably do that. Oh, great. Gary found another meme Twitter account. God damn it. Dark Souls Toilets. Stop. King of the Storm. God, God damn it. <laughs> that is a toilet with a parrot on the inside with a crown like this is this is all embroidered or painted into the toilet seat that mm -hmm. is it's a parrot with a crown holding a flag with a bunch of wheat ar and grapes around the sides a coat of arms above his head and two other parrots with fantastic mohawks at the top of the seat i don't know about you but i would be strongly urged to polish that every single day to make sure that nothing like <laughs> nothing goes away man's literally would just be like here let me polish my toilet on the daily because some dumbass painted this beautiful mural into it makes me sad that I don't own a toilet like that but also glad that I have a plain Jane toilet so I don't have to clean it every day so <laughs> <laughs> Dark Souls Toilet, <laughs> just on Bionicle. Apple, you can't do shit. Yeah, well, that that does beat me. Very soundly, Rock and Fun. Yeah, there's not much I can do about that. <laughs> How you doing, Rock and Fun? Uh, one minute, we'll get started, I think. Shadow Snake and Pam, thank you for the auto hosts. Appreciate those. I don't think I'll get to the next veteran reward rank. Oof. At least not during this uh, during this playthrough. Like maybe on the return visit, eventually. But I'm pretty I sure. I was like eventually. Cause it's gonna be like eight years before we come back to this game. <laughs> ah. I mean, see, I'm I'm thinking of it this way: is that uh, like we'll do when we do return visits, it'll be like a month maybe two months and during that month or maybe two months I will cover one expansion so like uh, the next if we were to return to it next time it would be the patch content because I don't think I think we're gonna get through Heaven's War but I don't think we're gonna get into the patch content uh, between Heaven's War and Stormblood at all so the next one would be like the patch stuff between Heaven's War and Stormblood and then Stormblood and then the one after that would be the patch content between Stormblood and Shadowbringers, and then Shadowbringers. I, I don't know if... I don't know how much of this I would actually go back to do, because I don't want to, you know, delay other people's suggestions. But if I use them as my own suggestions, I mean, I'd be delaying my own suggestions, but I have enough suggestions on my own to last until I'm about 45, so... Combined with everybody else's suggestions, that is. I mean, I don't think I have enough games that I've played in my lifetime where I'd want to play them on the stream that would last me till 45. But with everybody else's, I'm pretty sure. So. Okay. Take a drink of water. And let's get this show on the road. Ready? I'm loading in. So normally I'd be pretty coy about uh, these openings and stuff like that. Be like, oh well, I'm actually meeting you over here in, in Alda because we have to go do Miner's Guild stuff and blah 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 before we load in to take care of the... Uh, the, the primal, especially today because I'm not the fisher class, so I'm woefully underprepared for this, but uh, they promised me extreme fly fishing. Today's extreme fly fishing, so that's what's going to happen. How you doing, everybody? Welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV, the stream edition. Last time, 
Oh, we spawned in just after sunrise. I was kind of hoping to spawn in at sunrise, but I guess we could watch it come over the horizon there. Last time, we had to chase after, uh, basically, Leviathan. We had to figure out how he was being summoned in, and how the Sahagans gained the power of the Echo, blah blah blah, a bunch of stuff happened, and now Leviathan is uh, about to wreck shit by uh, throwing a tidal wave at Limsa Lominsa, so let's maybe, uh, let's maybe stop that, turn off the waterworks, and see what we can do from there. So, and uh, what we'll do is after we take care of Leviathan is when we will uh, worry about our Miner's Guild stuff. Not until then. So without further ado, let me hit up the Marshal over here and uh, get ready to load in to the Duty Finder with Lord of the Whorl. I was going to say, are those like High Cordials? No, Durability Droughts. Not really anything I care about. Uh, Hellish Claws, though, I do care about, so we will be grabbing one of those. Toilet race isn't an option in this game. Do you know how many people would embrace the meme? Oh my god, yes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> because trust me, if I could play as a as a toilet, maybe I'd do a meme run of it. That would be pretty funny. God damn it. Alright, Jimmy. Invite me to the party. I want to try something. Okay. An elemental converter, huh? Well, at least they got the Corrupted Crystals for me this time, instead of me having to do 12 or 15 side quests to get them. Goddamn side quests. It's like they actually learned how to delegate NPCs to do things off-screen for me. What a concept. Wow. Okay, so what's the final word here? Oh, okay. They've got diversionary efforts. Okay, and Yugiri wants to join up again. Nice. <laughs> I I would say so. Toilet Dark Souls can't do shit against Bionicle Apple. Yeah, Bionicle Apple pretty much beats anything that uh, we could come up with for things that normally don't go together. <laughs> so. Well, what is a god to a non-believer, Admiral? <laughs> She, she asked, she said, what words have I for a man who has made a sport of slaying gods? And I just told her, what is a god to a non-believer? Do I believe... Oh, what happened last time. Do I believe in Leviathan? No! I believe in Nafika. Well, thanks anyway for the, the words of encouragement. I'm sure they'll help on the way here. And we can now access the Horal Eater hard mode. Not that, not that there was a normal mode, but... Actually, I think, to be honest with you, it, it, it could be that the normal mode was the Final Fantasy XIV 1.0 version, because they said Leviathan was around before the Calamity, so maybe the Horal Eater was a quest in the 1.0 version, and the hard mode now is because it's a Realm Reborn. I, I don't know, I'm just guessing, but yeah. Anyway, uh, Party Finder... Not party finder, friend list. We don't want to go party finder. Yeah. Oh, look, and the sun came up. Nice. All right, so what I'm going to do, Cole, um, are you ready pretty much to queue in? Mm -hmm. Are you ready to queue in, basically? Or? Yeah. yeah, I'm ready. Okay, because I'm going to queue in, and then while we wait, I'm going to go outside of Morby Dry Docks, because there's something I'd like to mine outside. If we, if we don't get insta-queued. Yeah, if we don't get insta-queued. I mean, there's only two Actually, other wait, players on the thing, so. Try first. What? Oh, okay. He's trying something oh, first. It works! Wow. I set up a new tab for party chat. chat. That's, how That's how they were blue texting before. Uh -huh. So instead of using that, I can now use the party chat, and it's filtered to only show party chat. Aha. Uh -huh. I think. Unless it's the other way around where it actually does show. I have no idea. Huh. Strange. Hmm. I hope it's only filtered to show party chat. Sure, hold on. So what do I? You, 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 okay, it's fine. Do I send you a tell or do I? This is fine. This is I fine. think it's working. I hope. Oh hey, so we can queue now. Yes. Okay. Then let's queue. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> Most of the old OST 1.0 is now located on the dungeon Palace of the Dead. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Wow, that actually wasn't that long of a queue. I told you! I'm not even going to get to go do my mining. 
So I'll just tell you what the mining would have been if I got to go do it. There are um, earth crystals outside on level 50 mining nodes that I would like to have gotten, so. But uh, yeah, we don't need to worry about that right now because we queued into Leviathan like that, so. That certainly is a sea snack. Time to boop them in the snoo. Or you could use these cannons completely ineffectually. Oh, Leviathan's firing a Hadouken. He's unhappy. Here he comes, boys and girls. Um, we should probably prepare the worst. Prepare for the worst, I should say. Oh, they're they're tugging a little like float out with them. Okay. Thanks for the lift, Marshall. Godspeed. I suppose he's the one who should be saying that to me, though. Shit. Okay, well, fine then. Fucking one minute and thirty second long ad. I was gonna play Open Your Heart by Crush 40 when he bust out of the water like that, but then YouTube decided I needed a one minute and thirty second long ad. So just pretend like it's playing right now in the background. It is playing in the background. I mean, for you, yeah. Did you tell them that you're not uh, aware of how this works? Yeah, the other got it. Got it. He asserted dominance already. Okay. It's okay. I don't mind. I'm gonna go get up there so I can get miasmas and shite. Oh, okay, there he goes. There he go. My immediate reaction goes to this. I mean that. Wow! Oh! Yeah, that works. Leviathan's tail. I don't know if we're supposed to fight it, but I'm going to fight it. Okay, ow. Maybe it would be better to just do this. Also, there's Sahagans. Yeah, I'm working on them. Oh, no, I guess I'm not working on them. Maybe it's better to not stand directly next to the. The tail, huh? Uh, I like off tank. Establish this. Go straight DPS. Yeah, okay, well that's not good. Oh, thanks for the benefit too. I still don't know if I'm supposed to be fighting uh, his tail or not, but oh, I'm. No, that's not what I wanted. Wow. There we go. Anybody I don't else know get? Fuck about your tank. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Me either. I'm just smacking him real hard. I'm just gonna try to like, whoops. Uh, pretend like I know what I'm doing. How's it going over there? Jire spume. Yeah, by the time I'm done, like, attacking anything, setting any anything up, it's already too late. <laughs> this way. Okay. Well, that, uh, that happened. Yeah, it's fine. I got Embrace. Wow. Do I look like I give a fuck about your pool? Let's get another sucker up. How about... Oh, the elemental converter is now operable. I feel like that's a good thing. Uh, where is it? Oh, it's over here. Oh, map. Ouch. Well, I don't know what that was about, but you I got suckers, so. Wow. 
just sweep us away. I didn't need that. Uh, how about one of these, actually? Keep an eye on the other tank safe, too. Okay. I do have less straight in case we need it, so. Good. Keep going. I'll wave to the saga. Keep the damage going on Leviathan's tail as well. Are they, like, linked somehow? Is, is one's oh. HP linked to the other one's HP? Because I'm not really sure, but I'm going to try to... Alright, let's, uh... Okay, that, that works. I don't think I was playing well, but that works. <laughs> I mean, off-tanking really isn't that hard. You just sit there and wait for, hit, for the first tank to die and then say, oh, fuck. <laughs> Yeah, but as long as I have less straight, the first tank shouldn't die, so... Do you want me to set up a party chat for you, by the way? It's really easy. Commend healer. <laughs> yeah, commend the healer while I commend the tank. Uh, do you see the, uh, chat icon? Yeah, uh, the plus? Like, not the plus, the, uh, bubble. The bubble. It's next to where you type. Yeah. To the... Oh, party. Okay, I see. That's how you get the blue text. Oh, okay. I see. <laughs> I got commended. Well, that's good. I think they didn't realize I was the off tank. Three commends! Damn! Damn Jimmy, Jimmy Colton! Colton. Colton. <laughs> I don't know why. Again, I don't think I was playing well, but... What were you playing? Oh, you are playing the healer. That explains it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess so. Playing, playing healers is like easy commends if you know what you're doing. Well, we got Leviathan. Let's go play some Triple Triad! I am going back to Mirrorwood. Corporal. Okay. Captain. Admiral. Uh, she's a she's a maelstrom command. So okay. Uh, let me wait. Admiral. Let me wait on that until we're done with this triple triad. Let's see. For party chat, just hit the little thing next to the bar. Allows you to select who you're chatting with. Oh yeah, Cole. Uh, Cole mentioned the same thing. So. What? Rock and Fun got uh, sniped you there. He mentioned it just bef uh, just after we queued into the Leviathan fight. So. Oof. Also, in Decidia, Leviathan's boss theme is a nightclub crazy disco party theme. Hmm. I <laughs> just... Hey, Conker. It's going good. How's it going for you? Don't have class day, so you can join the stream. Nice. Nice. And, uh, yeah, you were just in time for the boss fight there, so... Samurai's FX are so loud, still love them. <laughs> I, I, maybe I wasn't paying attention. I'm not sure to, where to distinguish the Samurai's from the other ones, so... Leviathan just dropped the guitar. Yeah, <laughs> too bad the effects are so loud. His second phase is honestly quite nice. Yeah, I mean, it was... I'll listen to the, the theme uh, off-screen, probably. That's usually what I end up doing, is, like, the first time through we're fighting something, it's like I can't really hear the music because I'm too busy running around trying to figure out what the hell's going on and screaming my full head off, so... Uh, yeah, I'll go, I'll go listen to it on YouTube. Honestly, Leviathan's boss fight wasn't that bad. Primarily because the two, me and the other tank, were just buffed up to hell and constantly healed. I did like to keep, uh, what's it called? Uh, Lustrate handy and, uh, and I didn't get yelled at the entire sucker. boss fight, so that's a start. Yeah, that's not bad. No more no more crazy bards that are trying to, to eat you for breakfast. I'm gonna hate bards for the rest of eternity just because of that one fucker. Damn, dude. Three, open. Let's see if we can, uh, beat Mimi Doa here. Maybe. That's a... Oh, that's a Leviathan card. Well, I, uh... Actually, I can do something about that. Boop! Now what will you do? Oh, okay. <laughs> I can do something about that, too. Boop! Just boop all of his things. Uh... I might wanna... Yeah, I'm gonna play Miss Modi here to take his Chocobo. He'll probably take it back. Oh, no, he won't. Okay. Well, then, you done... You done fuckled up, son, I think. Uh, that is Tataru's card, and you can take that. So then maybe I should just go like this. Yeah, he can't take that back, so. Ha! Easy as that. I wouldn't know what any of those things are there, Mimi Doa. I'll be honest with you. Okay, let's take the teleport offer that Kul so graciously gave me to Limsa, even though I have more money than he does. So. Oof. 
bards just want to be loved. No, I I agree. It's it's all classes are good. It's just that the one bard is going to leave a bad taste in Cole's mouth for the rest of time now because he was a you know it all was a dick. It was the bard. It was the healer being a dick. Why was the healer being a dick? I don't know. He said I was he said I was being a shitty tank. Hmm. But I mean that's like his opinion. So yeah, yeah, it's that's his opinion. Honestly, the bard wasn't even being that much of an asshole. He was just backing up the toxic guy's opinion. Ah, oh, okay. He just wanted to get to the dungeon, and the scholar was being an absolute tosser. Ah, so it was a little bit of everybody, huh? Yeah, the Drake goon stood up for me. Hmm. Said that they said that I should at least be giving constructive criticism and just being told that I'm awful. Right. You know, like good, what good people do, but unfortunately, from what I've seen, good people are the majority in this game, but there are still a few rotten apples. Hmm. You're on lunch prep at home, so you're going to be lurking for a bit. Okay, Conquer, sounds good. Not a problem. Let's switch back to Monk, so that way we can gain the experience on the, uh, on the class that actually needs it. Because, I mean, Scholar's 62. I don't think it's going to need experience for quite a while. Mission accomplished, Admiral. I mean, you know, we can always queue back up for Leviathan later, but... Leviathans are sworn to strive, till sea swallows all. And swallow all it would have, had Leviathan prevailed. That we still strive now, we owe in no small part to you. In Soviet Limsa, I swallow the sea. Not for the first time, you have delivered Limsa Lominsa from the wrath of a primal. But never has our nation known a stouter ally. Eh, weren't nothing anybody else would have done. There, On behalf of my people, I give you my humblest thanks. Glad to help, Admiral. Not a problem. And, you know, till sea swallows all and all that. It's that I give thanks to old Mistbeard, too, for his fine solution. Whatever else he may have been, tis clear he was a resourceful soul. Would that I had a man like him in my service. Hmm. I mean, you kind of do, but I think that's the point. She's Before being coy. Before I set foot in these lands, I had no inkling that the people of Eorzea contended with such mighty foes. Suffice it to say, their existence came as something of a shock, as did the idea that they could be defeated. Well, there's a whole lot more where that came from, you Bagiri, so hope this you're ready. This experience has served to remind me of the vastness of the world and the boundless potential of man. <laughs> Rock and Fun says, Jeez, Cole, it's like obviously absolutely your fault of not knowing how to perfectly tank a dungeon the first time. That's like common sense. Duh. That was, that was about, about a perfect explanation of what he said. said. Mm. Except, except here's, what, here's, here's what actually really, really pissed me off. When, when the Dragoon finally, finally stepped in and finally said something, something about the whole situation, he's like, he's like, the Dragoon's like, like, you've given the tank absolutely no reason to talk to you because all you've done is shit talk him and not give him any constructive criticism. Here's what the healer said. I have no intention of talking to him. If he can't tank perfectly the first time, then he's not a good tank. Hmm. Well, to say, you know, for somebody who doesn't want to talk to me, you sure are talking a lot of shit. Well, that healer... I wanted to, but I did That healer must be a big fan of Miasma and Bio because they were toxic as fuck. Crippling my asthma addictions, man. Mm. Make terrible people. Know that I am tutored in one of the foremost combat arts of the fight. But at the end of the day, I know he was one healer, and every other healer that I ran into that had an issue with my tanking actually gave me advice instead of, you know, telling me that I'm the worst of the worst and should never play this game again because I didn't do it perfectly at the first time because he's a ri raging cunt. Mm. And I'm the exception because I don't know how to tank, so I can't give him constructive criticism. <laughs> Maybe you should pick up Warrior, or Dark Knight, or whatever other mysterious class you fucking keep saying you're picking up, but you haven't. We'll find out eventually. Probably not till after X5, though. I have no doubt that your knowledge and skills will serve us well. Besides, your art is not so You know, one of these days, you and me gotta get some drinks together, we just gotta get wasted and play this game. See what happens. Play 14 wasted? I don't know that it would be any different than normal. I'd still be shitposting you all the time. Exactly, exactly but it would be a lot funnier. Uh, uh. I would I laugh it off more instead of, you know, reacting, reacting the way you like I do. Hmm. Pass a shit. <gasps> I mean, when we start the stream, it's 5 o'clock in Atlantic time, so... But Limsa Lominsa is home to a certain secret fraternity. Its members are trained in a form of combat, not unlike... Item level 104! Nice. nice. 
You mean like the Rogue's Guild Thancred? Is that what you're referring to? By my judgment, it should not be beyond such individuals to adapt to the techniques I witnessed you employing with such admirable deftness. I think if I remember right though, the Rogue class was not added to the game until maybe th this expansion with Leviathan. And maybe that's what they're sort of being like, it's a super secret club, or maybe it was the expansion after this. So that's why they're all like, it's a super secret club, when at this point in the game's lifetime, it's not a secret to anybody anymore. You just go down to the Fisherman's Guild, and they're, they're on the door on the right, basically. So, did the healer just say that good tanks are superhuman? Uh, <laughs> I'm glad they have enough faith to think that, but... I'm heartened to hear this. I, too, noted a kinship between your style and mine own. Though it seemed to me that you fought differently in the beginning. He was, uh, rusty, Yugiri. Aye, <laughs> I suppose I did. What can I say? I'm a man of many talents. <laughs> or he could, you know, just be also be a gladiator. Well, you labor to believe it. Thancred was once something of a scoundrel who fraternized with the criminal class in these parts. What? Thancred? A criminal? No. 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 I never Stop. could have seen it. You jest, of course. But for a chance encounter with Alfino's grandsire, he might never have left Limsa Lominsa, or received an education in Charlian, or taken up his post in Uldar, which is where he trained in the Blade, lest you wonder. Tankard is so unhappy right now. <laughs> Spoil my entire past, why don't you? Lilia, please. Wah, wah. <laughs> it would seem there is more to you than meets the eye, Master Thancred. Lady Yugiri, I am told that you and yours came to Eorzea seeking permanent resettlement, and that many domains have since been engaged as frontier hands at Revenant's Toll. Mordona is many things, but a place of refuge it is not. Yeah, you're more like to find work there than shelter. Know that I would like nothing better than to furnish your people with a new home here on Lominson soil. Alas, racked by instability as we are, our nation is in no fit state to take you in. Why would you mention it then, Admiral? Not for nothing, but... Yet I'll not have it said that we turned a blind eye to your suffering. Until such time as we can do more, I pledge to send provisions. Ah, that's why you mentioned it. Okay, well, that's fair enough. They're letting out all his dark secrets from his past. Yeah, because <laughs> he he already let out one dark secret, Lahabria. So why not air the rest of them out? You know. Your debt, Admiral. I realize that it scarce qualifies as repayment, but if it please you, I shall set about sharing my martial knowledge with your people at once. Sounds like Yagiri's got uh, a mission now. You wished a word in private. Hmm. The better <laughs> not to spoil the festive mood. She she just looks to the to the right. Private Yugiri. History repeats itself, Admiral. Although she's As still hanging out right there, she's lurking. To summoning their god. She's lurking like me in a Discord server. They acted in self-preservation. I don't honestly like even have that many just it may be servers, but I just like initiated this particular clash. But how it begins does not interest me so much as how it ends. So what are you getting at there, Ishtola? <sighs> I have not forgotten our conversation, Yashtola. I am aware that man bears part of the blame for the primal's existence. Nor am I ignorant of the Sahagin's reason for acting. They sought to secure a place to breed and multiply that their kind might survive. Self-preservation, as you say. I mean, they could just go anywhere else, but... but... We have as much right to live and thrive as they. If our own survival is threatened, are we to lay down our arms and welcome oblivion? Nay. What were you wondering, Rock and Fun? And so you kill, that you might live. Yet if living is a right, then that right belongs to all peoples, be they men or beastmen. Well, then it's just survival of the fittest, which is pretty much where we're at at this point. I'll not deny your reasoning, 
But when a storm gathers, it falls to me to see my people safely through it. That is my duty, and I shall do it. As must we all, Admiral. Stay the course, then. But know that it will lead to no good end. Well, I don't see how it could lead to a good end if we ignore the Sahagans as well, Ishtola. Just a, just a thought. Hmm. Man has ever put himself first and foremost. To justify his actions, he clads himself in the armor of righteousness, though it be a fancy of his own making. In this, mayhap the Garlians and we Domans are not so different. I mean, we're all not so different. We all wear that armor, Yugiri. It's just kind of the way we are. Eorzea has become as a raging sea. If we are to keep our heads above the waves, we cannot scruple to drown the man next to us. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta find a life raft. Together! When hopes of coexistence founder, strength must determine who has the greater right to live. Well, I can't agree with the Admiral 100%, but... <laughs> I, I suppose I haven't done that much to change anybody's minds. I mean, I'm helping with the Ixal, with the Akatl 9, but that's a small chunk of them. The rest of them are so fanatically obsessed with Garuda that they're unwilling to even talk to the people in Gridania about, you know, making amends, so... Well, Hellish Claws. Get a new weapon for Monk, and I'll probably have to go Glamour it in a moment. Sometimes it's hard to criticize a dub with a language you don't know 100% of the culture and diversity. So what I say about the voice acting of this game, because you can't stop to think that something is severely lacking or just doesn't fit, but also may lack some knowledge on how English can apply differently in voice acting. Um, well, from what I've heard of the dub thus far, um, I mean, honestly, I, I feel like in some cases, because in A Realm Reborn there wasn't a whole ton of voice acting, and it was... I mean, it's it's nothing to write home about. I do feel like, along with the cinematic quality and the character development, the voice acting is getting better as they move closer to Heaven's Ward here. Um, but it's not, like, anything incredible, I guess. It's, it's good, but it's not... It's, like, middle of the road, basically, I guess. It's not anything to write home about. It's, it's fine, I will do just fine with it, but it's not something that I'll go, oh my god, the voice acting in this game is incredible, have you? No. Uh, I, there's uh, probably a few games that I could name off the top of my head that have a better, that do a better job of the voice acting with this, and one of them is in this same series, so, uh, <laughs> I mean, when we're talking about uh, quality voice acting with an English and, you know, not necessarily like just um, like American voice actors, but also... Uh, English as in United States, Britain, elsewhere in the world, Australia, that sort of stuff. Final Fantasy XII is kind of the gold standard for voice acting in the Final Fantasy series, I think. So, it, it's, it's, I'm kind of spoiled from it, so it'd be hard for anything to beat that. Um, and so, yeah, I, it, I would definitely say this doesn't even come close to that, so... If you haven't seen anything from Final Fantasy XII Rock and Fun, I'd say check it out because it um, will give you a good idea of what this game could have in terms of its voice acting if it, uh... Literally the only reason you know. you're saying that is because Bosch is your favorite character in, the no in all of history. Not Bosch, Balthier. Balthier. Gideon Emery, that was the first role I ever had with Gideon, saw with Gideon Emery, and it's one of his only leading roles in any video game that Jesus. he's been in, but... He did such a good job at it that I now consider him the best voice actor of all time. So, <laughs> and that's from one game. So, yeah, that that should give you a good idea of what my impressions of 12's voice acting are. Let's switch out for those hellish claws and then apply some glamour. There we go. Well, I've got claws on now, but... Uh, you wouldn't be able to see them. Let's see if our um, retainers are done. Yeah, they're done with their ventures. Excuse me. And uh, 
sold all their items for the day. I gave them some glamour prisms to sell as well, so they uh, they got rid of those. Because you just have so many, it's not even funny at this point anymore. Well, I mean, they're giving me the materials I need to make glamour prisms, so... And basically what I'm thinking is, like, once every few days I'll sell glamour prisms on the market because I'll have I'll have enough to make ten every three ventures that uh, Matilda goes on and every one venture that Ghost Hammer goes on. So I'll send her on more ventures than him, but... Uh, Oh, fucking hell. Yeah, I'll have enough from that. And I mean, they each come home with like 5,700 gil total from the end of it, so that's not terrible. Hmm. So that's that does make sense. With some this for Gigantoad skin. I think that the number of Gigantoad skin that I'll get will also increase later when I start upgrading her gear more. Like, her gear as it is now is like up to date with the level she's at, but when I get it updated more and more, she'll be able to. You know, probably get more and more skins to the point where maybe eventually she'll even keep up with the amount of Alumen that uh, Ghost Hammer can get. So, but until then, not a big deal. And let's take some of the money out from Ghost Hammer and send him away on his venture. I must have left some money on him from before because that was more money than uh, the other one. And uh, you can take it easy there, Ghost Hammer, because the element that you just got me is significant, so we'll just... Uh, You're over here with two retainers, retainers making you all the moolah, and I'm over here with one making exactly zero money. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to get them to a certain level so that they can start making you more money by getting you particular things. Like, um, I'm trying to think what materials you could get on the hunting expeditions that will make you some money. And I'm not really coming up with anything. There are certain materials, though, that just always sell on the board. Although I've found the one that I've found that's like that for me is Alamon. So, and you can't get that from normal ventures. You have to get that from a mining venture. So, maybe I should just find some poor sap on the market board selling it for low and then jack the price up. I mean, you could try, but you'd probably crash the market. So, I mean, it wouldn't be the first time I've crashed a market in a video game. <laughs> Okay, well, they're off on their adventures, so let's uh, let's head back out. We'll go probably take the quest, and we'll see when it leads us. Eventually, the quest will lead us back to Alda, and once it leads us back to Alda, the main quest, that is, we'll um, we'll go do our mining stuff. So, till then, now that Cole's got me on in, too, um, let's just go down to the Bulwark Hall. I'll go sell the uh, the durability drought that we got, and then we'll, we'll uh, be on our way. I really feel like 14 is trying to really keep going with 12's artistic direction, lore, gameplay, etc. But in terms of acting, they really have trouble emulating the proper and general feel of it. Yeah, yeah, it's... All you have to do is hear Judge Bergen's delivery, and you'll know that there's there's no comparison. Like, when, when Judge Bergen delivers his monologue in um, Mount Bur Amises when you fight him in the boss fight... There's, you can't compare. Like, there's no way that anything in this game could compare to that, at least not at this point. I've heard nothing that would even come close. The thing about it, though, uh, the reason why 12's voice acting... Oh, I can't sell those. Huh. Are they available on the market board? Because if they are, I'll just sell them there. But yeah, the thing about 12's voice acting that they did, and this is one of the smart decisions about 12's development, even though it was a troubled um, development for it, from what I understand. Oh, you can't. Okay, that's a little weird. Oh, yeah, that's right. Another thing. Speaking of 12, I don't know if you actually knew this, Jim, but there's a lot of bosses from Final Fantasy XII in this game. One very particular one. Yeah, I know they put up most of the espers and stuff in as well. Yasmat. Yeah. Well, we can't sell them, so uh, goodbye durability droughts. Oof. Don't need those. Clogging up my inventory. Um, but yeah, the reason why 12's voice acting uh, is so much head and shoulders above the rest, really, is that um, they when they hired voice actors for 12, they didn't just hire voice actors. Like that, it's it's kind of a weird thing to say, but the the voice actors in this game are voice actors. They're people like Sam Regal, 
and, um, you know, those sorts of people who, they, they do voice acting for video games as a profession. The people that voice acted a lot of 12s stuff are people like Gideon Emery, where they do voice acting, but they've also done theater productions, audio dramas, they've done stuff on professional tele national television before. They, they're more varied in their scope, so it's easier for them to kind of I guess emulate a role because they're able to and, and it's easier for them to sound dramatic and poetic and old English than it is for some of the characters here because some of the people here don't have that experience maybe they took theater in college and that was it they but they haven't been in a professional theater production like some of the voice actors in, in 12 they, they drew in 12's voice acting from a larger scope of actors it wasn't just voice actors it was voice actors and uh, actors on the stage actors from movies and television shows so that breadth allowed them to really uh capture that feeling that you get from 12's voice acting and that's again why it's just head and shoulders above pretty much any other uh voice acting that has been done in the final fantasy series so yeah, and you know 12 pretty well, so you you know what I meant. Okay, then good. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's why 12's voice acting is so good, and we'll eventually we'll get there, um, so we'll be able to, you know, play 12 and see it for ourselves. But yeah, not just yet. Omnitome, is that the one that I need? Uh, let me just do this. Let's see, no, that's the summoner one. We want the cognitome then, which is I think the next quest. You were going to mention it last time, but the stream ended just you got here. You beat RE Chain of Memories on Sunday after multiple attempts at the final boss fight of Rupee. Oh, okay, good. Nice job, Conquer. Congrats. I'll uh, I'll be joining you. I don't know when, but I'll be joining you in the regard of beating uh, Chain of Memories. I ha I've beaten the Game Boy Advance version. I don't know what Cole's having hyperventilation about, but... I'm laughing my ass off because both of the tanks are like, so uh, how the hell do we tank Leviathan? Uh... Well, I guess I'm going to learn... <laughs> Damn, Damn, Paladin's, Paladin's really popular, popular as a tank class, class isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yep. Two, Two more Paladins. Oh, oh never mind. mind. It's Paladin and a Dark Knight. But yeah, I've beaten the the Game Boy uh, Advance version of Chain of Memories. I haven't beaten RE Chain of Memories, though, so. For 14, you only know, like, the Japanese, English, and French, and it's kind of hard for you to criticize Japanese. Yeah, same here, so. Only criticize English and French properly. Yeah. And I mean, like I said, it, pretty much my impression of the voice acting is it's okay. It's nothing to write home about, but I guess it'll do. And it's nothing against the voice actors. I mean, they did get Gideon Emery back for this, but as Urian J, he just sounds bored, really, by comparison to some of his other roles. Mm -hmm. So. You mean the Rogues Guild there, Sergeant? Because that's who they are. <laughs> okay, well, I'll see what I can do. Ah, thanks, I won't need it. I'll be good. Is this going to be like a How I Met Your Mother situation or something like that? Most likely. Years down the road, they're going to be like, and that's how Yugiri met the fraternity. Oof. Uh, where are we going, anyway? Let's look. Is it where I thought it was going to be? No. No, not quite. Alright, then we won't, uh, Ethernet. We'll just walk there. I was thinking it would have been over by the Rogues Guild, but, uh, apparently not yet. Maybe later. Usually voice actors are also actors. The French voice of Nox has done plenty of, uh, dub. He was a singer, and he's quite popular actor in drama, so no idea how I saying it. I, I get what you mean, though, like audio dramas, basically, and that sort of stuff, and he's also, you know, done singing and stuff like that. A lot of vo voice actors in the United States stick pretty much, like, pretty closely to just that role. They don't really act outside of voice acting, um, unless it's as, like, an additional, uh, you know, an extra or something on a, on a U.S. television show. So, um... So yeah, a lot of them, it's not that they don't have the experience of acting, because they have probably done some form of acting or theater or that sort of thing in their history. It's that they're so 
stuck in the voice acting role because that's what they've chosen as their profession that it's hard for them to adapt to some of the moods that they want and the you know the professional sounding i don't really know how to say it without degrading voice actors though i guess but uh, yeah it's it was different with 12 because like i said they, they drew from a different audience of actors it wasn't just voice actors so and that sort of helped beat it without upgrading dark mode the entire game it was kind of annoying entering it and then being taken out after two or three hits yeah <laughs> i could see how that would definitely be because that's uh that's difficult man in french Rion j sounds like he wants you to be part of his next sex tape <laughs> oh no uh some kind of business uh, i have a, a letter of introduction from the admiral if that makes any difference to you well, you bet it doesn't, but, you know. I am. <laughs> he's he's keeping himself busy, yeah. Ah, Yugiri, you made it. Yep, that would be her. What what exactly kind of preconceptions did you have, Yukiri? I mean, they're a shadow society, but <laughs> well, true. Sounds awfully familiar. Sounds like the kind of uh, the kind of business that Yugiri was probably in when she was back in Doma. But... Right. <laughs> Don't what's it? No, that's that's a little that's a little pervy there, man. I mean, I know you're a pirate, but like, okay, fair enough. I was kind of hoping you'd be part of all the Scion missions from like here until ad nauseum, but I'm sure she'll be back. Eh, nah, ain't nothing there, you Geary. Don't worry about it. <laughs> if I ever decide to become a rogue, I might take you up on that, but uh, I kind of doubt it. Elegant Silver it is, since uh, this is not, like I said. Yeah, that's the summoner one. We don't need that. There we go. You start with eight points of dark mode once you unlock it, and that's all you had to work with. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. That's that's like nothing at all. <laughs> I see why, but half the oh. French acting in Realm Reborn is hypersensual with voices in really deep tones. Oh, you know, you know that's, that's something that's never happened to me before. before. What's that? I gotta commend as a DPS. <laughs> ah. I, I do that. I do that sometimes. I give it to the DPSs if I think they're doing really good. I mean, I was busting my ass. I don't know. Cole, one of the rewards from the Through the Maelstrom quest is an onion shield. I need it. <laughs> you should do Through the Maelstrom and take it. This is the one we want, though, for Scholar, is the Cognitome. It's the level I level 90 right. Scholar weapon gonna, that we'll get from I'll this. So. do my next Red Mage quest real quick. So that way I'll be level 57 on RDM, and then I'll switch over to Paladin and keep moving through the story. Hopefully getting enough money to buy my pants today. See, you and I are a little different in that regard, because I usually stick with the DPS when I'm doing single-player content, and then I switch to healer when I'm doing dungeon content, but... Well, you see, I tend to switch it up whenever I really feel like I don't know how to tank. I'll usually switch over to DPS, because DPSing a boss only occasionally has a really tough learning curve. Hmm. I only usually tank when I have people that I know in the party. Hmm. Fair enough. Which was my mistake. I gave in to the whole, I need insta queue kind of thing and that's probably the reason why i was doing so terrible in the dungeon because honestly i queued as a tank because i didn't feel like waiting <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's why i tank that's why i queue as a healer so you forgot about that sounds like you found something to do with it yeah yeah it sounds like you made it through anyway there conquer so as long as you made it through the game with that i mean you probably couldn't like you know, do what most people do where they spam Dark Aura or Dark Fyraga or whatever through the game, but it sounds like you made it anyway, so. Half the French acting in A Realm Reborn is hypersensual voices, yeah. <laughs> I think I already read that one, but. Oh boy. 
All right, well, we're done here. Yugiri's gonna do whatever she's doing, and now we are going to Ulda. Okay. One thing that I kind of despise about the interim patch content between A Realm Reborn and Heaven's Ward is just the fact that they're like skimping out on 110% of everything that isn't the quality. Like, I'm not getting any gill, I'm not getting any experience, the only thing I'm getting is new places to go and murder and primal, which is awesome, don't get me wrong, but you'd think they'd be giving you some cash instead of, you know, well, like, see, nothing. Well, see, the thing about that is that by the time you're, when they first made this content, People didn't need cash or experience because level 50 was the cap and you could earn as much cash as you wanted doing roulettes. So they were like, yeah, we're just not going to feed you too much money, basically. As nice as that would be because feeding me money would be very helpful right now. <laughs> you just don't want to wait. I, it's not even just that. It's just I recall getting through and having 300... 300,000 something gill just occasionally. Like I wouldn't even notice. Hmm. And I'd be like, oh damn, I got money now. Time to spend time to spend it all on fashion. And now it's just like it's like a drought. <laughs> That's why you said you get out of it after two or three hits, and Anson would always knock you out of it in two hits. Yeah, I could see how that could get annoying. No Dark Fairaga or Dark Aura unless you had enough time to set it up. And I I bet you with all the hits that you know, with you taking two hits and being out of it, it's it would have been tough to set up, so did have max HP though. Well, that helps. <laughs> Dark or an absolute beast. It's when the enemy doesn't have a zero card to break it. Yes, yeah, that's the only uh, uh, problematic thing is that if the enemy has zero cards to break your Dark Aura, it's not so good. Although, from what I understand, um, maybe this is just true of the GBA version though, but the jumping attack in the GBA version is like super busted too. It's It's like, it's almost as good as um, Strike Raid and Sonic Blade are for Sora because the jumping attack, it, it does two hits and it's quick and it, I mean, you usually get at least one of the hits in before you're interrupted, so. That's, again, just from what I understand, though. I, I've watched a speed run of somebody and that was the only thing they did was the jumping attack when they were <laughs> uh, doing that. Um, I'm not sure if it was Dark Break. It was, uh... In the GBA version, it's the one where he jumps up in the air and he shouts and then he does two hits. Uh, it could be Dark Break, but I'm not 100% sure on that, so... Alright, well, we're back in Alda, so before we go see Minfilia at the uh... Or no, we gotta go to the Rising Stones. We're in Alda anyway, so let's go to the Miner's Guild and, uh, take care of our next mining quest. I mean, technically, Revenant's Toll isn't that far away anyway, but... Yeah, Ansem does have a lot of zero cards. Yes, he does. And that's a bit problematic. You think Zemnus would be the one to have a lot of zero cards considering his obsession with nothingness? Unfortunately, but um, unfortunately Zemnus isn't a uh, boss in Chain of Memories. So, of course he isn't. Why the hell is the guest of 13 in the city of uh, or 12 in the city of Vaughn? Did he like knock down Balthier and steal his invitation? <laughs> I, I wouldn't be shocked. See, the thing about Vaughn is I don't mind him as a character in 12, but I, I don't like the reason why he's implemented in all these games as 12's representative or just in 12 in general because Bosch was going to be the main character of 12, but Square Enix's, uh, I think their PR department or something, said, we need a teenager being in the lead role or else this game will not sell. And this was in 2006 before that was something that every company in the gaming industry said. So, Square was like 10 years ahead of the rest of the industry at that point, and they were like, okay, fine, we need to implement this character with basically no uh, real... Well, he has Rex, I suppose, but they probably wrote Rex in as an afterthought, basically, when they were like, well, we need Vaughn in the story, and that was like with 12 months of development left, that they had to change the whole thing around to include him. I don't mind it, because he sort of reminds me of the protagonist of The Great Gatsby in that regard, where he's not directly connected to everything that's happening in the plot, but he's a bystander that goes through all this stuff with the other people. Um, but I don't like his implementation. And they've kept with that implementation for every subsequent release, except for the War of the Lions release of uh, Final Fantasy Tactics, where Balthier is the guest. Although I think Vaughn is a guest in Tactics as well, but I don't think it's in the War of the Lions one. I forget, so. It is Dark Break? Oh, okay, gotcha. 
change it so it can do more hits, but you need to use the reaction command. Oh, okay. And in the RE chain of memories. See, I've never done side B in the uh, RE chain of memories version, so. You haven't played chain of memories, period. I played chain of memories on the uh, on the GBA version. I beat it on both sides in the GBA Gosh. version, so. Now we're going to get some more silver out of this quest. A challenging commission, huh? Well, thankfully I've already got it done, so. The only thing you remember about Vaughn and 12 is, I'm Captain Bosch! Yeah. <laughs> that meme is a quote you can spam into City. Well, I'm not I'm not shocked. It's it's one of the most memorable moments Vaughn gets in that game, and it's not when he's being a badass, it's when he's being a troll. So it kinda kinda shows you what Vaughn's whole point is in that game story. <laughs> I don't know. I I've always thought about doing a um like, uh, there's a few YouTubers that I've seen doing these what-if videos where they, they talk about, like, what if this was different in the story? And, I mean, it's basically fan fiction storytelling. But I've always thought, if I was going to do one of those videos, I've always thought that, you know what I'd do it on? I'd do it on Final Fantasy XII, what if Vaughn and Pinello were not main characters? Like, I would probably replace them and the rest of the kids from uh, Old Dallin's, like, posse of children that he has with the kids that are in the Giza Plains, basically. And so Vaughn would be like Jin, and um, Pinello would be, oh, what's that one kid's name? Uh, the one that likes Jin, I forget. Uh, Terra, maybe? But they'd be the little kids there instead of actual characters in the story. So they would be like part of it somewhat, but they'd be se uh, secondary to people like Bosch and Ash and Balthier and Fran. And then obviously you'd have to have other characters join the party after that, so. But I don't know if that video is ever going to happen, because it would take a lot of doing, so, you know. When you play Noctis, you can spam, I am Noctis, Prince of Lucius, and King of Fishing! <laughs> well, he is, so. Hell, I caught all the... the hell, I caught all the hardest fish in the game with Noctis when I played 15, and I was only fishing level 6. It took me like half an hour to catch that one fish in uh, the... Wormwood, I think? He actually, he actually isn't kidding. kidding. It took him half an hour. Mm hmm It did. It really did. And I just sat there. I was like, I'm going to need to pause this occasionally to take a breath and take a drink because my eyes are glued to the screen and I'm going to I'm gonna lose my, my eyeballs in a moment. So, yes, uh, we got for, uh, Obsidian for uh, the Guildmaster previously. Now we need Wyvern Obsidian. It's really not as hard to get as she makes it sound like, but... Oh, really? Okay. Well, that's going to be hard, Guildmaster, because I already did all the work, but okay. <laughs> Our partner in this endeavor is named Wide Gully. All right. Sure, I'll go introduce myself. Hi there, I'm the guy that did all the work already. Ready to reap the rewards? Every character is a meme quote that, that like everyone spams in more high level stuff. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, that, then the Square was aware of the memes that they created and they were like, well, might as well embrace them. What do you mean, Wide Gully? Like, what did what did the Guildmaster say? I'm not used to these compliments from my Guildmaster because the last Guildmaster in one of these classes that I had was Guildmaster Geva and she wouldn't l uh, lump a compliment on anybody if it killed her. So. Fuck. What? Um, uh, right doing my red mage quest, and uh, they just summoned Cthulhu. You mean a, a mind flayer? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. About a hundred times bigger. Ah. So the mind flayer from uh, Temtara Deepcroft, except reader, well, like reader repulsive. Mind from Stranger Things. <laughs> oh. That was you with the Anson fight. Multiple breaks, drinking water, and multiple deaths, and retries. Yeah. <laughs> I know that feeling. I think that was pretty much me when I did uh, side B on the uh, GBA version. Oh yeah, I'm an adventurer, so I can't. I nobody can trust me. I, don't, just ignore the fact that I've saved the world multiple times at this point, out of the goodness of my heart. Okay, so what are you going to do? A contest, huh? Okay, what name your game, Wide Gully? 
The purer hull, huh? Well, we need to get high quality wyvern obsidian anyway, so. Yeah, I'm sure you've been doing it a lot longer than me, but I've already done it, so, uh... <laughs> let's, let's hold off on telling him that. We'll just walk over to the Guildmaster and be like, you know, faking like, I don't know what to do, my, my partner took off on me. Just hand her the obsidian. Oh, I get as long as I want? Okay, cool. I need one second. Oh, and the client's name is Roger. He's outside the Gladiator's Guild. Okay. That name sound familiar to you, Cole? Mm -hmm. Roger, outside the Gladiators Guild? Nope. H-R-O-D-G-E-R. -E Apparently not. <sighs> All right, well, let's go to the Gladiators Guild and turn in this stuff. Take a slow stroll over, even. Oh, is this where the Masked Carnival is? Okay. Uh, if you're a blue mage, you can, um, once you get to level 50, you can go inside of the Masked Carnival, where... I'm sure all manner of crazy shenanigans happens. Probably a bunch of people in there using self-destruct on themselves, but uh, yeah, I, I have no idea. I I know only the thinnest of details about Blue Mage because uh, I haven't Honestly, even tried it yet. Honestly, the is quite mysterious, and the fact that you almost never see them. Never see who? Yeah. Never see. I haven't seen one since the class came out. What, Blue Mage? I've seen a bazillion. <laughs> all you gotta do is look for the person casting with diamonds surrounding them. That's a Blue Mage. I did not know this. I, I actually saw a good chunk of them when Blue Mage actually dropped because everybody was running around in the, in the open, in the overworld, uh, learning Blue Magic at that point. But that was like for a three or four day period and then they sort of dropped off the face of the earth. Probably because so. everyone realized Blue Mage is actually kind of hot garbage. <laughs> I wouldn't say hot garbage so much as it completely trivializes low levels and then can't do anything in high levels because it can't join in uh, dungeons unless the party is undermanned as it is. So. In the end, you used almost pure slights against him and dodged every non slight attack he did. That seems like a good strategy, though, so. Set the first zero card as a shortcut and tried to break every slate he tried to use. That's also a good idea. What I like to do with mine is I like to set my zeros, like, uh, directly at the... I think you can set them at the end of the deck, and then you can just slide over to them whenever you need them. So. Sounds like the ideal boss fight you like to deliver against that. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much does work out fairly well in Chain of Memories if that's how you set yourself up, so... Before snow, lightning's troll coat quote was meow meow choice chow earth. Now that snow is here, the room is full of hey sis, I'm not your sis, hey sis, I'm not your sis. <laughs> nice. Forgot to mention, use the hope and pray method. Yeah, that, that always works too. <laughs> Hoped and prayed that a good Mickey card would show up. Right, yeah, because if it's not a good Mickey card, it really doesn't do much for you. If it, it's like you get a Mickey 1 in a final boss fight with Ansem, it's like, well, this is this is garbage. What am I going to do with this? Oh, Wide Gully is Deep Canyon's son. Oh, okay, so he's got an advantage over us, but... Yeah. You, you could tell me what you know. I've already got your Wyvern Obsidian, so... Oh, well, good. Glad that he didn't get uh, the jump on you. Glad he didn't do the murderizing of you. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you're going to use the Wyvern Obsidian to make the uh, Makua Huitl sword that we were told about with the Obsidian before. But... Ah, okay. Okay, well, fair enough. I was going to say, well, how can you walk out all looking shiny and new with a sword that doesn't shine because there's no metal in it? But if it cuts through armor like a hot knife through butter, fair enough. This guy really likes these South American swords, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. Over near Thal's Respite, huh? Okay. So where is Thal's respite? Well, I will actually show you. We're not, we're not gonna pull a find out in the net. No, no, it's it's a little too early for that one. So, yeah, it's in the Wellwick Wood over in Eastern Thanalan. Not quite again where the game shows you there. 
up there is Thal's Respite, and if you go over here, just before you go into the South Shroud along the walls, I can't really show you, but it's along the wall here, and then along this western wall just below, uh, down and to the left of this uh, arrow for South Shroud here, uh, is where I got my Wyvern Obsidian. There's like four nodes all along the uh, walls there that you can uh, readily access it from, so. And I've already got it! Uh, so that's that's good, and we can take it right over to our uh, guildmaster now. Wonder if Y Gully is off doing uh, off doing the the running around at this point or not, but he's probably still out and about while we're ready to already turn our stuff in. He's probably gonna bust in and be like, "How the hell did you get that so fast?" I already did it, son. I know the future. I know what my guildmaster will want before she even wants it. That's next level, bro. It is next level. I have access to the wiki, Wide Gully. You can't beat me. Oof. <laughs> yeah, sadly, Riku's deck can't be changed in any way, but... Uh, I mean, for most, the most part, they give you what you need, but... Uh, yeah, it, sometimes it's it's tough. There's a good time. I found the optimal strategy. Let's cure, cure the shit, shit out, out of my master, master until he feels better, better and then kill the boss. Ah, nice. There's a good time to use them when Ansem reloads his cards and he has the guardian in front of him. Ah, that is, yeah, that is a good uh, good time to use him. Because then he's kind of just sitting there passive, so. Mickey's like one of the two only ways to heal with Riku. Yeah, he's he's the only form of healing Riku gets, and so it's a little it's a little tough because you got to rely on RNG to get you good ones. Oh, fuck Oogie Boogie card is everything until it's used up. I forget what the Oogie Boogie card does. I think the only one that I know off the top of my head is, uh... Is it Dragon Maleficent? I forget, but it's, um... You know, I don't even know. I know that there's a card for Dragon Maleficent. I know that it's pretty good for Riku because you get it really early on, but I don't know, remember what it does. Oh, Oogie Boogie's auto heals you ten times. Okay, well, that that is pretty good then, huh? No, I didn't have any trouble at all. As a matter of fact, I had it before we even needed it, so... <laughs> well, good. I sure hope so. I got it when I was about level 43, so... Fucker! He just insta-killed me. Welp. Shades of the good king Mogglemog. Hmm. Does that attack get stronger every time he uses it? That's a little unfair. Hmm. Means you gotta kill him a little quickly. Yeah, but I can't. My master, I need to keep healing his dumbass. So he doesn't know how to heal himself. Hmm. No, that's that's fine. That's what I'm here to learn is what there is to what it takes to be a miner, so <laughs> I sincerely doubt that wide gully. I'm pretty sure you haven't gotten any Wyvern Obsidian. You're just you didn't get the chance to go out the door, so you're just like yeah, I already got it, it's fine. Okay, fair enough. You go take the credit with the client, I'll take credit with the guildmaster. Sounds about right. Yeah, he, he wanted to he wanted to turn this into a contest. Dragon Maleficent increases your attack for 30 attacks. The cost is lower reload speed, which means nothing to Riku. That's right, that's why it's so good, because it just straight up increases your attack with no downside with Riku. So, what you remember is because it's still fresh in your mind. Right, yeah. Well, that's good, though. It, you know, it's a good card. Again, was wondering something. Okay, during childhood, what kind of show, animated shows, did we have? Because always thought of that kind of stuff. Really depends on the country and society. Um, we kind of have talked about this before on the stream, but I'm not sure if you've been here for it. Um, I grew up on a lot of uh, '90s cartoons with Cartoon Network, and also on a, a decent chunk of Disney stuff probably why I like Kingdom Hearts uh, the first one so much when I when it came out um, my personal favorites from my childhood I mean I watched a, just a whole plethora of, of Cartoon Network shows 
Um, but my two personal favorites from uh, the time period when I was growing up were uh, Courage the Cowardly Dog and Codename Kids Next Door. Those were my two favorites. I mean, there was a bunch of other really good ones, too. There was, um, you know, like Ed, Ed and Eddie was a good one. Um, Justice League, the animated series, was a good one, although that was a little bit older. I think I was like 12 or 13 when that came out. Uh, just just a whole chunk of, of good cartoons, really, when I was younger. So, same here with you. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I think it, I think in the United States, it, everybody kind of got the same sort of stuff. Although it was it depended on your parents really, because your parents either pretty much had you watching Nickelodeon or Cartoon Network. You usually didn't have too much overlap, um, at least from what I understand, because there were almost cliques in our schools when I was in elementary and middle school, where it was like these kids watch Nickelodeon and these kids watch Cartoon Network. So I don't know if that's how it was for anybody else, but that's how it was for me. So Ed, Ed, Nettie, and KND were your favorites, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Ed and Eddie was really good too. It's just, I, I, I liked Courage a little bit better. It was just, uh. Courage, Courage the Cowardly Dog, dog was a fucking trip. All I have to say is it was just a trip. It was, it was weird enough where my young brain was like, I'm kind of spooked by some of this stuff, but I'm also intrigued. That one, that one like, like really ghostly, ghostly head, head that pops in that one episode scarred, scarred me for life. Oh, you mean you mean the one that's the real person with like the eyeballs blacked out? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, still I still see that, that fucking head in my nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cur courage was awesome. Like it, it's if you've never seen Courage the Cowardly Dog, you should go online and you should look up. Uh, what was the name of the episode? Last of the Star Makers, that's it. If you've never seen Courage the Cowardly Dog Rock and Fun, go watch Last of the Star Makers. You will be crying by the end of it. <laughs> and I don't say that lightly because I, I don't get that emotional with that kind of stuff. Last of the Star Makers still brings me to tears, man. That show fucked me up. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> you know what the worst part was? Do you remember the last episode? Of courage, yeah, yeah, yeah it wasn't he even. Finds his parents? Yeah, well, that was oh, not the that funny. wasn't the last episode. That was the second to last episode, actually. Um, the last episode was one where he got a tutor to teach him how to be perfect. It was the season finale, and they weren't expecting the show to get cut. But the show got cut, and they were like, "Ah, well, shit." You know, what are we well, gonna do? Courage so. found his parents before the end of the show. True, very true. Here's a funny thing: in French, you had this kind of stuff probably much later than we all had around 2005. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, please explain, because that's kind of interesting. Maybe it just didn't make its way over, like some older video games. So. Oh, <laughs> that's okay, Rockin' Fun. I know what you meant. Some envy at what, Guildmaster? Let me. I wasn't looking. Oh, okay. Envy at my talent, my raw skill. Okay, sounds good. Now that we've taken 20 minutes to do that Miner's Guild quest, let's actually, like, move on with the plot. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go sell my silver pieces, though, before we move on with the plot. Anything else I have to sell? Nope, that's it. Okay. Uh, Sapphire Avenue Exchange is not that far away, right? Yeah, just go straight up this way, and it's right there. We'll walk, then. We will walk towards the Sapphire Avenue Exchange, and then we'll we'll move right along from there. I will say this as well, though, about um, about the Akadal Nine quest that we're doing now. The highest end stuff from the Akadal Nine quest now can get you some halfway decent gathering materia. Actually, um, it's like level four gathering materia, so it's pretty good. Um, I haven't really slotted it into any of my equipment yet because I'm pretty sure I can't. Uh, most of my mining equipment is not a high enough item level for it, I think. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. And it probably works pretty well on the market board, too, in terms of its value, so... So it helps. I, and also getting oak knots out of it, so pretty soon I should be able to buy those, uh, crafting gloves that I was talking about, so... But we'll just keep at it until we, uh, get that opportunity. All right. Enough of uh, standing around doing nothing. Let's uh, do that and go to Revenant's Toll. There we go. Kira, thank you for the auto-host. Appreciate that. Well, that's not f***ing ominous at all. Are you doing main quest now, or are you doing... Yeah. Uh... Oh, okay. How are you? 
I'm going back to Mordana to continue with it now. Uh, through, You'll see what I mean in a hot minute, then. I'm doing through the maelstrom. Yep, I'm ahead of you. Ah, okay. Did you get your onion shield? Yes. And is it as, is it the same as the one you've got, or? No. It's a little better, actually. Hmm. Is it the same glamour-wise as the one you've got, or is it? Uh, I mean, I glamoured it out to look like that one. Ah, okay. Okay. All right, let's report into Minfilia and see what she has to say. I have been reflecting upon the events which took place during our visit to Vilbrand. And what did you find? If you have a moment, I would share my conclusions with you. Please, bear with me. Okay. When the Sahagin Elder summoned Leviathan, he employed the power we have come to know as the Echo. You mean the stuff that lets us see the past? Well, I cannot well explain the how of it. It would seem he became immortal in so doing. Does the Echo just sort of do whatever the hell it wants, depending on who it's in, or...? When the Admiral subsequently slew him, his spirit emerged from his lifeless flesh, a consciousness shorn of physical form. And then Leviathan ate him. Thus transfigured, he took up residence in the body of his minion with the ease of a man donning a favorite glove. Yeah, that was a little creepy. Oh, let me read Rock and Fun's comment here. Since 1980, think there was like an extreme explosion of anime and manga and basically TV shows at the times were like City Hunter, DBZ, Sailor Moon, Night of the Zodiac stuff. Everything was translated, even the opening and ending. During 20, 30 years, France was a huge otaku. <laughs> So many anime and TV shows, it was insane. So you guys were probably somewhat ahead of us in terms of the, the anime and stuff while we were getting our 90s cartoons. So then you guys caught up on the 90s cartoons in the 2000s then. Is that what you're kind of kind of getting at? Long have I known that the Echo That's allows cool, one though. to pass through the walls of a man's soul. Wait, you can do that with, with the... Why doesn't anybody teach me how to do this stuff? That would be an awesome mechanic in a dungeon. You gotta pass your soul to somebody else so they can open a door for you or something. Never did I imagine that what the hell? Free us from our own flesh, nor less that our souls could then occupy the next corporeal vessel to take our fancy. Hmm. It was of this that Elidibus spoke, an existence which knows neither cessation nor oblivion. Because it's immortality. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Precisely. Yet, okay. Though gotcha. Though Hagen had mastered his gift and thereby become immortal, he was by no means invulnerable. Yeah, immortality and invincibility are two very different things. You can be completely immortal and still be, like, cut to pieces and have to live like that. It sucks, man. As we both bore witness, he was ultimately absorbed into Leviathan. If you were taught how to do it, you might become overpowered. Yeah, I guess that would be a pretty OP skill, wouldn't it? I don't know if it would fit in an MMO setting either, to be honest with you. Like, maybe, like I said, it's a dungeon mechanic, but you could make a whole game around. Uh... <coughs> Excuse me. You could make a whole game around the idea of possessing other people's bodies and then having them do things. Hell, I'm pretty sure they did make a whole game out of it. Wasn't Beyond Two Souls about that? I've never played that, but uh, I think I heard about it. I didn't hear if Beyond Two Souls was a good game or not, but, well, you know. I've heard some very nasty things about that game. There a legend which hmm. tells of souls who are reborn upon the cusp of each umbral calendar. Oh, dear God, it's fucking going darkness. down. We'll find out what Cole's talking about in about half an hour, but recent events have given me cause to wonder. I think I'm going to stick to the story for a little while because I think I know what's coming. Hmm. Remember that gigantic effing spoiler that I knew that you didn't, that I refused to tell you? Uh, sure. I think that spoiler is going to be coming to fruition relatively soon. Hmm, okay. Much and more yet remains unknown. But I'm and not to mention, as long as I keep doing the story quests, I'll keep getting money, and the more money I get, the better. Closer you get to your pants. This entire game has just been a quest for pants for me. I mean, that's most RPGs when you start with no pants, so... <laughs> I mean, from what I understand, Diablo 3 on launch was literally quest for pants. Mm -hmm. At least according to zero punctuation. <laughs> and every other type of equipment, but pants was funnier because in Australia that's like saying underwear, so. Fair. 
Might even be able to take control of large enemies and get close to killing themselves and switch back or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although you can kind of do that already if you can if you play as a blue mage and you get the death claw skill hit. Because death claw is like it, it reduces their HP to a certain threshold. It has a really, really, really low chance of hitting in 14, like much lower than uh, when it was in five, where it was actually useful in certain situations. But yeah, you could technically get that to happen without even possessing them. But yeah. That that takes effort. <laughs> if the story was to hand me that power, I'd be a little more. Is that the key to defeating the Asians may at last be within sight. So you want to use the Echo to defeat these people who know everything about the Echo? Is that what we're trying to? It is my hope that I shall fathom this matter ere long. Okay. You guys keep working on that. Oh hey, Rianje, what's up? Oh, I was just about to send for you, my friend. Is Optimus? It's got that look on his face. Great tidings from the Charlian motherland, my lady. Then again, he's always got that look on his face. It doth concern our distant allies, the students of Valdesian. Okay, what about them? What of them? My lady, the Isle of Val, which for many years hath been the Order's home, is no more. Oh no! No more? Whatever do you mean? I relate only that which hath been conveyed unto me by our agents. An etheric wave of the highest magnitude was recorded in the region. Soon thereafter, twas observed that the isle had ceased to be. Jesus Christ. Etheric wave, is that like uh, the kind of etheric wave that the Ultima weapon was capable of? Is, is that thing still around? Oh dear God. Or it could be Omega Weapon. Yeah, like, like I was saying. Oh my god. They dropped a hydrogen bomb on the students of Baldessian. Well, that's no good. I mean, Gallif and Cryo will be fine, because they, 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 they just hit underground with all the Object Desarts, but... Actually, it'd be Object Desart, but... If there are no other I think. matters, I move that today's meeting be adjourned. Haven't played five in quite a while. Yeah, same here, Conquer. I've thought about maybe playing it for this year's Four Job Fiesta, um, but I don't know if we'll be able to. It depends on what games we have going on at the time. Like, if I get a choice in July, which I think is when the Four Job Fiesta happens, um, if it comes to my choice at that time, then maybe we'll play it then. I'm not really 100% sure yet, though. We'll see. Because Four Job Fiesta, from what I understand, is pretty fun. Uh, I get absolutely zero choice in what jobs I use. Um, it's all determined by the generator on the Four Job Fiesta website. And if any uh, donations come in, they all will go to the charity that they pick. But, um, yeah, we'll see. Mayhaps. It is done, my lord. I... <clears throat> forgive my impertinence, my lord, but these orders... I am uncertain as to what ends. I smell some shit going down. This is the guy that was actually going to take in the domains and all that, right? Hmm. Revolution. Uh oh. Maybe he's not as good of a person as I gave him credit for. Uh, yeah, Cognitome's the only one, right? Yep. But knowing this game, he's probably just a good man with terrible intentions. <laughs> I wouldn't be shocked. And terrible execution. Through the Maelstrom. I'll bet you that was like the last quest in patch 2.2 right there. Because of the way that they went about it. If that was the last quest in 2.2, I would have been pissed. <laughs> been like, well, you can't find out what happens until after this. Big cliffhanger. And I kind of disappeared on TV for you guys in around 2003 or 4, because some political, some politics thought these shows were too violent for kids, and the TV channels who were allowing anime on their program were gaining much more power and money and wanted to create their own channel, so they decided to shut down the rules about anime on TV, so the channel that was growing more and more money could basically shut down due to bad view ratio. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is a bit extreme, I think. That's, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't expect that. So that's probably when you guys got all your cartoons then, like I was saying before. So. 
because they were less violent, quote unquote. So, well, we don't know that everyone and everything is gone, Manfilia. We know the island is gone, but the students may have made it out. Okay, and what would you speak on? Yeah, okay, what about him? Right, but I'm assuming there's a but here. Well, there's a yet, anyway. I'll bet you Ramu's stirring. Oh. Wonder what Philomene needs. A manner of problem so big that I had to Akuma teleport across the room for it. <laughs> More refugees? Did the Alamegans get some ideas when we took the Dolmens in? What the hell? Really? Hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say, there's something fishy about this. Hmm. No, I guess we owe them enough to just go see what they want. Alright, I'll be there. I mean, I gotta go out that way anyway, so. The experience of anime impacted the whole French TV, and most channels were suddenly really having trouble keeping up with their objectives because you now had American cartoons and stuff after that, but many people were boycotting them because they kind of felt betrayed. Yeah, and as they should, because they kind of took away, you know, these shows that everybody was following, so. Move was definitely a bold move. The economic consequences it had was massive. <laughs> And, and you wouldn't think, you know, that anime, in that time period necessarily, like nowadays I could definitely see anime having such a, an economic uh, influence because it's so much bigger nowadays than it was when you were talking about it, but at least in the U.S. anyway, that's my impression, but apparently it's been big in other places previously and it had enough of an impact to, to do all of that, so... I mean, anime, even without it being popular, even without it being broadcast on televisions over here in America, does still provide quite a bit of popularity for the shows. Mm -hmm. Most of the time it's under good circumstances, but you know what? Well, they do them. Hmm. Fair enough. Okay, oh, okay, I was going to say, there's a lot of people here, but it's all just, like, quests that I haven't done yet. Draggle-tailed refugee. Here we go. How poorly is this going to end? Um, no, the, you, you misunderstand. The Dolmans came here because they had nowhere to go. Well, neither did the Almegans. I, we don't know that these guys are Alamegan, not immediately. And would the Alamegans all come here being begging for food and stuff like that? I, I don't know. And which one got took? Yeah, but not run to the Scions. If you're going to run to Revenant's Tall, then your work day is going to be just as hard pretty much as it is there because adventurers all come here. You know, it's not like this is a refugee camp. It figures. You do a favor for one person, then everybody wants to jump on the bandwagon. It was because we had to get Yugiri in the in the uh, game as a character. That was the extraordinary circumstance. <laughs> yeah, we're just a few people, man. There's not much we can do. I mean, you could go to Little Alamigo. There's enough people there with a grudge against other people to to kill those other people, which I assume we're doing in Stormblood. What's up, Tataru? Uh-oh. Wounded by who? The 
the rep... Why? I mean, probably for the same reason that these guys are talking about. They don't like the rich people climbing on their backs, but... So, so you guys came here thinking that your demonstration would, like, hit on two fronts or something? Like, what? Well, then maybe you shouldn't have hired people who were quick to go to resort to violence to be your protesters. I mean, they wouldn't have hired them. But... Yeah, we should probably go see what this whole riot's about first. Let me guess, that includes these three jokers. Blind to what, exactly? Okay, I can do that. Oh, okay, and Ida and Papalima are gonna go take care of the Twelves Wood. Okay. So we gotta go and see Miss Modi at the Hourglass, then. I'll deal with you guys later. I should probably go to the Hourglass anyway because um, I need to put Glamour on my uh, my Cognitome there that I've got for Scholar. So we'll do that in a little bit. 1970s, 2000 were really popular in France right about their disappearance. Many French dudes are trying to do their own anime, use massive inspiration Japanese modern culture and art style, do their own mangas and anime. Some of them became quite popular. Oh. Uh, any that we might know in the U.S. they're rockin' fun? I'm, I'm not really sure, but, uh, I mean... Very well could be something that we might know of. Like, name off a few that, uh, were, uh, created in that time period. And maybe we'll know. Alright, let's go see Miss Modi. We'll, um... That's a cool, if not strange, unintentional detail. What's that? At some point or another, you're going to be fighting a group of enemies in a cave. And to make something very... And it's actually kind of an interesting detail. All of them are relatively weak for their level. Hmm. Hmm. Makes them actually feel like refugees. You know, people who are ill-equipped for the situation. Especially considering it's me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well. They didn't have a f***ing chance. Oh, Alfie notes up on his feet. Huh. Here, I was thinking he was going to be, like, in, in a bed or something, but do I have anything? I, I keep checking if I have anything needs to be repaired before I go to these in rooms, <gasps> but... I guess I don't need to check so compulsively. So let's just swap over to Scholar. We'll uh, glamour our co new Cognitome, and then we'll uh, see what Alpha Notes got going. So there's that. Let's do this. And update. Then glamour it. Just like that. And then update. Cool. Uh, can I, like... Let's see, can these be converted? No, I didn't use them for long enough for them to be converted. Okay. And I gotta get rid of that steel pickaxe, too. Well, I'll, I'll worry about selling them or something later. It's not that big of a deal. Back to Monk. What did that say? Oh, it was a road to 60 uh, indicator. Okay. Even now, you can still feel the impact among his enemies head in France. Basically, this country's still big otaku. They're the second country that buys and exports and creates the most, but first is Japan. Right. Okay. Hmm. That's interesting. An interesting bit of culture that I, I definitely wouldn't have known otherwise, that's for sure. Ever heard of a game named Dofus that had an anime? It's 200% French. I'll have to look it up. It doesn't sound familiar, but I'll, I'll have to look it up. Both the game and the show are from France. Okay. Actually, come to think of it, well, I don't know if this is 100% true, but, um... I mean, yeah, I figured, but with everything that was going on, I kind of figured it was more serious than it was there, Alfie you know. Come to think of it, now, I know that, I'm pretty sure anyway, that uh, Code Lyoko was French-Canadian, not actually made in France. 
But Code Lyoko did kind of have that similar vibe to it. Um, and Code Lyoko aired here in the States. Um, it was it was like a, a video game simulation, and there were these kids in a boarding school. And it, it, ver- it felt a lot like anime. It was like basically the Cartoon Network version of... Um, well, actually, I don't really know what it would be. It's kind of, I guess it's kind of like Reboot, which I don't know that much about, but... Um, the best way I can put it is Code Lyoko was effectively an American-made anime-style show in the style similar to Avatar in its feel. They used a lot of 3D animation. They pulled a lot of the similar plot elements. Yeah, I was going to say, it kind of felt a lot like Avatar The Last Airbender. So. Oh, is it French? Okay, I thought it was French-Canadian. I don't know where I got that from, but... Um, yeah, that's that's one that I definitely know about. Um, that was a really good show, too. <laughs> so... It's an MMO with a unique art style. Ah, okay, gotcha. So yeah, that would be the one that I really know. If that's what came out of France, and considering what you just told us, it's not really a shock then that Code Lyoko, uh, as a show, was the way that it was. Um, I personally, though, I've never, I've seen like probably about half of the episodes of Code Lyoko, and I've always wanted to go back and just watch the whole series because it was really good. It was, it was probably after uh, Kids Next Door was done airing. It was probably a show, one of the shows that actually like. It was one of the only cartoons after Kids Next Door was done airing that I kept up with, basically. So. Can we all just sit down. And, I remember the day the last episode of Kids Next Door aired like vividly. It was a good last episode. It, it was a little crazy, but that was kind of to be expected. Like, I remember the last so. episode specifically because you and me, for the first time in quite some time, really sat down and watched a cartoon together, even though you were a little older. Yeah, it was like a movie was releasing or something. We, we went practically, like, put the time aside to be like, we have to watch TV right now, basically. Because so. I remember, because the, old, because the episode was hyped to shit. Mm-hmm. And then it opened with, like, the older number five in the interview in real life, and we were like, what the fuck? <laughs> Yeah, our, our brain, brain just, just imploded. imploded. New Code Lyoko. There was was both 2D anime style and 3D Matrix video games inspiration. Yes, yeah, yeah. And I think that blend was really what made the show for me. It was it was very interesting that they they took the two and kind of jammed them together. It made something pretty good, from what I understand. So anyway, Alfie notes fine, but Alda is not fine. Alda is the polar opposite of fine at the moment. Yeah. Tensions long simmering are at last threatening to boil over. Oh boy. My home is in danger! My home away from home is in danger. Ulda is a nation infamous for the great disparity. Ulda is where I met my red mage boy, where I met my red mage buddy, and also where I became a fucking paladin. Because they believe that every man bears responsibility for his own lot in life. As opposed to the rich people who want to move that responsibility onto everybody else, but take the profits from them. I can see why they feel that way. I get the distinct feeling that this that this storyline between here and Heaven's Ward is going to be fucking insanity. Small wonder that the wealthiest wield the greatest influence. Yeah, it is a very. We're going to be fixing like every problem with every single nation between now and Heaven's Ward somehow. Mm. You think they would have been happy enough with us to massacre the primals? No, we got to get involved in politics too. <laughs> Most yeah, people here like Gordon Ramsay, he'll fix your restaurant, your hotel, your marriage, all of your friends, and your profits. Yeah, but people actually look up to Gordon Ramsay. The people in Alda are too busy counting the coins in their pockets to look up to anybody who's killing the primals for them. Well, that's not symbolic at all. <laughs> at least from what I understand about the quest, which is not much at this point. Yeah, Code Lyoko was produced outside of France. We got a full English dub and an opening redub, yes. And it was pretty good, too. Um, I, I think they did a really good job with the redub. So where do the refugees so. fit I gotta watch it in French, hierarchy. though, just to see how it was. Places there for those who fled Alamigo and the destruction of the Calamity. Uh, Plainly, well. There is none. They have no wealth, no power, and no worth. To the Uldan way of thinking. They may as well not exist. They could go to Limsa or Gridania and try to eke out a living. I mean, hell, I know the pirates will give them a rough time, but Choosing to at one point those pirates had no home either, so... It's patently not an option. General Rauban and the Sultana understand this, which is why they ordered the immortal flames to provide... Oh, oh that was the best dirty look I've ever seen. Yet none would dispute that the expenses incurred by this policy grow by the day. With no end in sight. Yeah, that's usually how a welfare system ends up happening. It sort of grows out of control. 
This has prompted more and more Uldans to question their obligation to aid these worthless wanderers. Hmm. So now, the, now even the poor people here are, are turning away the refugees. While more and more refugees have come to resent their treatment at the hands of the civilian <sighs> citizens. You know, that's got to be a really weird system. Well, just an entire city that functions entirely on the fact that there literally is no middle class. Mm. You'd think after the calamity, people would have realized that, hey, yeah, maybe we shouldn't be cunts to each other, but no. I, I don't think that that's something that everybody would agree on just because the world's ending, Cole. Well, you gotta think about it like this. The fear of death does a lot to people. I mean, the fear of death can bring people together to do incredible things, but unfortunately, everyone must have realized, hey, even if the calamity happens, we're all just gonna come back from the dead. Uh. Well, they didn't come back from the dead. Some of them actually lived through the calamity, um, but most of them don't recall the calamity, as you may remember from the beginning of the Realm Reborn storyline. Nobody knows what happened during the calamity. They just know that most of them lived. So they were just kind of like, well, whatever, and I guess we'll just you know go off on our own and do whatever. So Yeah, you need to hear the English opening, and we need to hear it in French. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I find them both on YouTube. You might, yeah, you might just find them on YouTube. I, I forget where I was looking for them. I don't think Cartoon Network has it on their website, though. It was only a matter of time before the refugees united in protest. I'm just saying that it really doesn't make sense to me personally why the apocalypse would bring people together. Like, that's always what happens. Like, after the whole world ends and you just live the calamity, you're like, huh, may as well just go back to business as usual. Like, no change whatsoever. The literal idea that you could have died 15 seconds ago had no prior impact on your life whatsoever. Hmm. Just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, but the world ended and people lived through it, so they were like, well, whatever. Guess we'll just go back to being assholes to each other. It's too bad um, I didn't play this... Um, during the point to where in real life there was uh, the, the stuff with Syria was happening because this would be really interesting social commentary. I mean it still is, it's just not as relevant as it was when uh, you know the stuff with Syria was happening <laughs> like the Syrian refugees and everything. I mean technically I guess that is still ongoing but Yeah, if you do find them rock and fun, definitely post them in the server. You could stick them in like the videos and music category, the community category. Um, cause I, I've always, like I said, I've always meant to, um, go ahead with, uh, uh, watching the whole series. I just never have gotten around to it, so. Oh, you're listening to the English one right now? Really brings you back. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Alright, let's see what's going on with this riot, then. Yeah, true, Conquer, very true. And that's why there's a riot right now, or there was a riot, anyway. Hmm. Oh, okay. I guess we'll go see what the general has to say about this. He knows Alda better than most people, so... I think the only people who know Alda better than the general are Miss Modi and the Sultana, so... Alright, so let's go to the Hall of Flames. And see what the general has to say about this. Hopefully, uh, hopefully he's done with his day job of saving people money on their car insurance. So he can help us out with this matter. Uh, oh, okay, here he is. General! Alfie Node and I have been looking for you. Did we fight Boxfish already? Yes, we fought Boxfish there, Todd. We kicked his ass even though I have no idea what I was doing. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Sounds like most of my first fights with the Primals. Also, hello, Todd. How you doing? What's up, Todd? Yeah, I know they're busy with the refugees, but uh, that's... Yeah, I'm, I'm here to help if possible. Your chirurgeons? What are what are chirurgeons? Did I even say that correctly? Hmm. Oh, okay. Let me guess. Most of the next quests are going to be us uh, going to these pockets of resistance, trying to help them, ultimately beating them up.
Yeah, yeah, they, they've got those guerrilla tactics. So. You found the short and the long versions in both languages? Okay, nice. Yeah, go ahead and post them. That'll be cool. Next Primal has an amazing theme song. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> this man speaks truth! Uh, I'm going to have to, like I said, I'm going to have to listen to the OSTs for these Primals uh, on YouTube afterwards. So, Because I don't really get the chance to hear them a lot during the fight. So... Oh. Hmm. Yeah, that's, uh... <laughs> it sounds like they're being supplied by somebody. And I can think of who. It's almost like I've done this before. Yeah, I... <laughs> Maybe multiple times. Hmm. Someone's supplying them there, General. Of course someone's supplying them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but how are you going to restore order if we don't find out who's at the root of all of this, General? That's precisely the problem. Until we find out the root... Until you kill the captain, the infantry won't scatter. You know? Alright, fair enough. Sounds like it's you and me, Alfie Node. I guess we're going to be investigating this all on our own. Hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah, they probably will. That's what I figured you were going to say. <laughs> with my silver tongue that I barely ever talk with? Sure. Why not? Okay. Let's do some legwork then. Alright, Commander Swift. Uh, I know that you're not my necessarily my commander. I do hold you in equal respect, but I need a favor. I do, yeah. Yeah, I, I, you know I take care of this stuff. You know I take care of this stuff, Commander Swift. I mean... Commander Rashad has to have given you a good word or two about my progress. Yeah, now get to it, Holmes! We'll have to meet up with Watson after this. AKA Alfie Node. And it's it's weird because um, the last time I, I heard anything about Sherlock Holmes, speaking of television shows, since that seems to be the recurring trend of this stream, um, the last time I, si I saw anything relating to Sherlock Holmes was the TV series Elementary in the United States, and Watson was uh, of the female persuasion in that show, so it's not a good look there for Alfie Note, I suppose. I almost said uh, I have to report to Joan Watson after this, because that's the name of Watson in Elementary, but that wouldn't exactly be true. Alfie Node Watson. It doesn't quite fit together, does it? Oh, okay. So we got to go to Lost Hope, which is, I believe, over by the Sunken Temple of Karn. Uh, no, actually, it's. Uh... Oh yeah, okay. Lost Hope was that um, that place with the disgraced Flames Commander that we went to. This is way, way back. Probably like stream number four or something like that. I forget. But yeah, that uh, the Vimen gentleman back there um, was is the one that uh, Rock and Fun said we needed to do for the gentleman uh, side quests or the Hildebrand side quests, as I think they're known on the wikis and stuff. This Pio Rio guy is also important. We'll be coming back to do uh, the side quest that he's got a little bit later. But in both of those cases, we're going to be doing them during the Heaven's Ward campaign. Um, so we're going to hold off on them because if I, if I if I wait to do the Heaven's Ward campaign and do those side quests before going and doing Heaven's Ward. We would get through Heaven's Ward faster, but we probably wouldn't get to Heaven's Ward until about uh, episode, I'm going to say, like somewhere in the 60s, like low 60s, we'd get to it because there's a lot of side quests that we could do uh, in the time between. Oh, yeah, and the, um, 
I turned off the mount music using the stuff in the system config that Rock and Fun suggested, and it does in fact turn off the mounted music, um, and only it lets the area's music play instead, basically. But since there's like a dust storm, there isn't really a whole lot going on in terms of this area's music. I don't know. Maybe we'll turn it back on, depending on whether or not there's a ton of dead air. I would like to hear the radiant themes for this area, these areas, though. So that's why we've turned it off. Okay, apparently we've got uh, two people to chat with. Well, Leofric knows me because I've uh, I've seen him before. Okay, Don, now you need to check some of the shows you watched when you were a kid to see who produced them. Yeah, <laughs> see if they got any uh, any production outside of France so that you can see if uh, we may know about some of them. Hmm. No, I, I didn't read your report, so I don't know what you're talking about. The Flames did send me, but not because of your report, so... Okay, Zazawaka has something to tell us. Yeah, the refugees who were inciting revolution. Hmm. There's some kind of merchant that came through, but I guess we gotta go speak to. What was his name? Zazawaka? Yeah, Zazawaka. Let's go check with him. Uh, I think he's actually this way. Can't really tell. Oh, okay, so I could have just come around this way from behind the behind the thing. Alright. Then let's go see what's going on in here. Hmm, there's some refugees over there, too. Not one of who? The refugees inciting revolution? Yeah, I'm not with the flames. I'm with the maelstrom. Which fanatic? I need a name. How do you expect me to figure this out if you don't give me a name? Now give me a name, or I'll cut your balls off and sell them to a Krogan. Hmm. Which merchant are we talking about? Okay. Let's see what this refugee has to say for himself. Don't draw what? Well, I know what I need to do now. Whoops. That's not how you spell soothe. There we go. Again, at that time, most American shows were fully translated. Like you guys said, Kim Possible around 2003, and every song was fully translated, and there's a lot of versions. <laughs> Get on top of Behemoth, and then interrogate people. Yeah. <laughs> Just interrogate the terrified refugee from atop this 20-foot-tall monster. Sounds like a great idea. So you guys probably got a lot of those shows then around the time they actually aired, because I think Kim Possible was an early 2000s type of a dealie. So... So which merchant are we talking about? You guys are playing the pronoun game with me, and I don't like it. Oh, so that's how they got those weapons, huh? Well, if they took those weapons, then... They're kind of resigned to their fate, aren't they? Like, is this really my job to fix? Gloam earrings. I think the Noct and Gloam and all that other sets, yeah, these are these are close to, I guess not that close because they're still, I mean, they're item one, level 110, whereas these are 130. But if I didn't have the um, iron, augmented ironwork accessories, I'd probably want to take these Gloam ones. Um, 
to go along with my stuff for Monk. And then I think there's um, Daystar earrings. and uh, The Daystar set is the item level 110 equivalent for Scholar. But, um, well, we don't need them because we have the ironwork stuff. Until we start getting armor pieces, then we will need them. Uh, but until then, I'll just take some silver. Yeah, probably. Hmm. That sounds a lot like a religious fanatic. It sounds like an Asian. Oh, <laughs> one man against an army, huh? Call myself a regular Zack Fair, except I'm not going to die. Spoilers! Zack dies. Oof. Press F to pay respects. Um, where are we going here? Oh, okay, up on the Quiver and Mance, which is where we were. I think the last time we were in Lost Hope, we went up there, too, to kill off some crazy people. They were a lot uh, closer to our level then, but, uh, you know. Uh, I think I need to go across here to get up there, if I remember right. There was a show that worked quite well. It has more of a Looney Tunes to it. It was called Agi et les Cafards. So in English, it's really Agi and the Cockroaches. Hmm. Doesn't ring a bell, unfortunately. Kim Possible is 2002, actually, really more late for stuff like Marvel and DC's animated series. Oh, okay. So did you guys maybe then not get, like, Justice League and stuff like that until, um, until later? Did you guys also not get Batman the Animated Series or Superman the Animated Series until later? Because that, that is a travesty. <laughs> Batman and Superman the Animated Series were also very good. Are they up here, or are they in the caves below me? Because this looks like caves below me. All right, Quintius, let's get moving back down here. Because I think there's a cave system down there. Maybe? I'm gonna look. Sorry, Confucius. Yeah, here we go. Now we're in the right place, or we will be in a moment. Well, this doesn't bode well. So you guys are just stuck down here with the Fs? Man, this place sucks. It's not a wonder you guys want to revolt. This does not bode well at all. Well, you can't tell me what it is because, you know, spoilers. Oof. Uh, how am I going to knock these people out without killing them with my hellish claws? They're claws. Oops. Well, I stab. Hit them with a backhand, man. Armed refugees. Yeah, I guess I could bap them with the corner of my thing. Oh, hang on. Be with you gentlemen in a moment. There we go. Had to get Confucius back. I noticed he only had 17 seconds left. Who else wants some? Come and get it. Oops. Can't do no fancy footwork when I'm doing this. <laughs> nice 620 on a true strike. Uh, oh, those Fs are part of a fate. I'm like, wait a minute, did they spawn all the way over there? No. No, they spawn right here. Uh -oh. I should probably put uh, Bloodbath on. Just to keep myself topped off, you know. Mamma mia, I don't like where this is going. Okay, I guess I can have Confucius heal me then. Swap them over to healer stance. See, this is why you should be raising your chocobo call, because worst comes to worst, you can just shift over to healer stance and be fine. I mean, you can procure yourself or use clemency, I'm sure, but. Do you even have clemency yet? Not yet. Hmm. 
you heard that Crisis Core reference and you felt it and it was still 10 years too early. <laughs> yeah. Backhand them, kick them, either will work. Yeah, true. Very true. Had them quite a bit late. Remember Batman series with awesome art style and Spider-Man series with a kick-ass opening. Yep. Those are them. Those would be them. So. Yeah. We, we got those in like the late 90s. And they were both very, very good. So. I'm just trying to show you that you shouldn't be like going crazy about this stuff just because some random dude handed you weapons of destruction and war. Alright, well, now that we've uh, struck the fear of God into them and, you know, the fear of Confucius, let's let's go back to Lost Hope and see if we can't uh, figure out what to do next. Yeah, they were pretty cool. Those were another couple of cartoons that I uh, grew up watching that were also very, very good. I can't remember all of them off the top of my head, though. That's the thing. Like, all the cartoons that I watched that were really good growing up. I'm getting old. I have to be reminded of these things. Excuse me. What is in my way here? Couldn't see it. Well, whatever it is, it got around it. Yeah, I, I'd rather that I just backhand and kick them than they get run through by the flames, so. Oh, lovely. You think you fixed your headset with the power of duct tape? <laughs> nice. Duct tape is a very powerful element. Tis. One of the strongest. It's resisted by very few. Except for flex tape. Flex tape resists everything. Mm. Everything. I would, I would make a Jimmy, Phil Swift reference. When I say shit is hitting the fan in the storyline now, I am not overestimating it. Shit has officially hit not only the fan, but the industrial fan behind the fan that's blowing at the speed of a gale force hurricane. Damn, dude. We ain't talking about a little shit either. We're talking like hmm. manure factory. <laughs> Damn, dude. What about that factory at the end of a dog's life? We haven't seen that yet. It hasn't gotten that bad yet. Mm. It's gonna get that bad. Yeah, duct tape is low-key a powerhouse force. It is. <laughs> One of the strongest in the universe. If ever aliens come to our planet in search of our technology, they'll come here and be like, we want all of your robotics, we want all of your nanotechnology, we want all of your medicine, and we need your duct tape. Specifically duct tape. Mm-hmm. Yep, they'll come here asking for duct tape. So let me get this straight, Callie. You want me to reason with a god? Mm. We're screwed. <laughs> I can't reason with people for shit. The only thing I know how to do is murder and stab. Well, whoever this merchant is, apparently they're in stone's throw, so let's go see what we can do about that. They're only a stone's throw away. God damn it. I'm pretty sure that's true. Yeah. You set yourself up for that one. Well, fair enough. You set yourself up for that other one last time, so I guess it's only fair. I don't even remember what that last one was last time. I know I was laughing pretty hard about it, though. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing a meme with Spider-Man's English voice, and it was awesome. The guy sounded absolutely terrifying when he was doing the evil black suit voice, and it was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they did the... Uh, from what I remember of Spider-Man the Animated Series, which at this point is not a lot, they did the the black suits, uh, um, like, I, I, I want to say quest line, but that's not correct. They did the black suit arc, that's better. Um, a little bit better than they did in the movies, I think. The, like, the movies were just like Tobey Maguire being a large ham with cheese. The the uh, animated series, it was a little more true to the, the, the comics, I think. Well, anyway. You know, I didn't even know that there was a, a village, quote-unquote, over here. I mean, it's just a collection of huts, but... Or no, maybe I did, because I think we've been here before, now that I think about it. Duskwing Freelancers. Hmm. wonder who that's for. Well, anyway. Just in case we get into a, a bit of a fight here. Your parents?
Well, don't like it because he's lying to you. Hmm. Okay, well, I guess we gotta go find uh, these people then. Oh, okay, we gotta go to the Hall of Flames. Because maybe the flames will have some intel on this. Alright. Fair enough, I suppose. Yeah, same that, same with me there, Conquer. There's a lot of those shows I'd like to reapproach as an adult, but it's it's hard to find the time along with all the other stuff that I do, you know. So when he was chasing Shocker, you found the scene on YouTube. It's short but priceless. <laughs> I'll check it out. Check it out once we're done here. I can put away my helmet now. My blindfold. Don't need it. Don't need it while I'm running around in town. Well, that's, well, that's not, not being ominous, ominous at all. That's like your entire uh, commentary today is, oh, this is ominous. <laughs> yep. This story, this story is getting, getting very interesting. interesting. Hmm. Because, because everything's going, going to hell everywhere, everywhere at once, and, once and, and I am one person. Hmm. So, so something's bound, bound to go horribly wrong. wrong. <laughs> oh, probably. Well, I, I forced them to lay down their arms, but... It, Persuaded might not be the wrong, might not be the right word. I, I sort of, uh, I beat them up until they laid their arms down. I just shot energy swords in their general direction until they stopped. Mm. Red mages are overpowered, bro. We have a very fond way of reasoning with people. I use lasers! Pretty much. Alright, so we don't need any of the accessories from these quests. Although, like I said, the Gloam set will be good for Monk. The Noct set is good for your tanks. And I'm willing to bet the Auroral set is good for your dexterity classes, like ninja and uh, that sort of stuff. But we well, don't need any of it, because I have Ironwork stuff. So. annoys me. What? And just a little bit. And this game, especially if you're running around going through the main story, generally, for all these accessories that you get, you only really get, like, a chance at two sets. You get one for your magic, and you get one for your tank forward slash DPS. You can't have all of them at the same time, which really limits up the ability that you can take. Well, you can get these from, I think, dungeons or something like that, or maybe it's, like, extreme mob primals or something, but it requires you to, to basically grind those I mean, I'm not complaining. I'm still going to try Dark Knight and build him for vitality because I'm a fucking lunatic, but... Mm. So, do we know who this merchant is? Because everybody is still playing the pronoun game here. Hmm. Okay. Well, yeah, that's fair enough. Okay. I think I know Landabird. I feel like we've we've talked to him or seen him before somewhere. I've definitely seen him when I've been walking through the Pearl Lane previously. So, but anyway, yeah, let's go see if this Landabird person can help us out with this refugee situation and see if uh, we can take care of the situation with all of the, the revolutionaries that want to kill all the rich people. Although we can hardly blame them, considering the fact that the rich people are currently treating them like garbage. Mm, fair enough. Uh, yeah, let's go to Sapphire Avenue. And then we will just uh, head off the beaten path here. Oh, look, he's right here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we've talked to this guy before. I don't remember I believe from that where, you're but... about to witness the part where shit hits the actual proverbial fan. I don't know where Watson is, Conker. That's a good question. I'm sure he's got to be around here somewhere. Maybe he'll come in in the next section here. Hmm. Is that what the guy said to you, or...? This all sounds very ominous. Boy, this is ominous. This is ominous study exe right here. Oh, the soldier you're talking about is me. Oh, okay. Well, at least he doesn't consider me... Well, he said I'm no better than the bastard, but he didn't call me a bastard, at least. 
No, I'm not willing to beat you guys up unless you start, like... Oh, the other refugees? I mean, if you want to tussle. Well, good, because I wasn't going to raise a hand against you either. I was just going to trip you and let your own weight knock you to the ground. And totally, <laughs> totally embarrass you. That's like next level. Ha! <laughs> uh, he knows about that, huh? Ah! Well, the gods smile on me today. Oh, it's not for coin and country. At some point, this is going to get personal. And then this merchant's going to have a problem. Uh, which gate is he going towards? Oh, he's in central Thanalan now. Okay. Then that's where we'll go. Uh, we need to go out of this gate, actually, because this gate is a little closer. He's at that one farm, I think, just outside of... Uh, Central Thanalan right here. I think. Or he's at the railroad tracks. One or the other. Either way, we're going to go track him down and be like, you know, what the hell? Because it, it's obviously not this guy. This guy's not the, the major domo here. He's not the problem child. Because if he was, he would have a different name other than Mistrustful Merchant. He'd be a named NPC. If we were playing hide-and-seek, sir, I think I win. Well, you may know something that I need to know. Okay, then tell me what you think you've done, and then maybe I'll go from there. Yeah, the ones who were paid by a merchant, probably not unlike yourself, and were given weapons of destruction with which to cause that revolution. I don't need evidence. I have hellish claws. All I gotta do is wave them six inches in front of your face if they weren't invisible. And then I'm pretty sure you'd tell me what you need to know. You forget there, sir. I'm an officer of the Maelstrom, but I'm not acting on behalf of the flames. I can detain you if I want. Listen here, you motherfucker. I will detain whoever the fuck I want. It's always only business. That's what sickens me about it. He's looking for somebody. I'm still here, you know. Try to run. I dare ya. I have a quest marker. I'll follow you to the ends of the earth. He's not joking. He will. Agree to protect you? I'd sooner find the man we're looking for and then throw you at him. <laughs> Quite impressive how there's so many factors that build your childhood in terms of animated show. Animosity in France between generations is known anime and the one that don't is something for sure. <laughs> yeah, I could definitely see that because it's like, you know, there's the people, like like you said, there's the people who were watching, pretty much grew up on the anime stuff, and then there's the, you know, the kids that came after they took all that stuff off the air and they grew up with the cartoons, and I'm sure they're probably like, well, you know, I don't see what's the problem, and they're like, it was a big problem because it, it was, you know, people grew up on that stuff. It's hard to forget, you know. What does your self-insert character have? A younger sibling that we've known nothing about that he killed or something? <laughs> I... I mean, technically the younger sibling in this case is... Okay, then. I would say nice shot, but I'm pretty sure that's the man I'm looking for. Or woman. I'm not judgmental. As I've said in the past, I'm just mental. Hi there. Yeah, somebody's a pretty good shot around here, and it's not me. Yeah, I was going to say, technically my younger brother, younger sibling in this case, is a uh, potato person. So. Hello. <gasps> <laughs> so, what do you need, guys need me to do? I can help. Oh, okay, well, fair enough. I know nothing about him. And I was about to beat the shit out of him for inciting revolution when he got killed. 
I wouldn't call him responsible, but I'm pretty sure he had something to do with it. Fine then, carry on. Good. Good, then I guess we, uh... Probably need to go report back to the general, or yeah. the commander. Yeah. Alright. Back to old Da we go. I don't know, though. It's almost like the, um... With the music off, it feels empty. You know what I mean? With with the chocobo music off. Maybe I'll maybe I'll switch it back on after this episode. Cause we're not getting a lot of the you know. Figured out by now that the tone of the transitional main story is quite different from the Realm Reborn one. Yeah, it is. It's definitely a little bit different. Yeah, there's there's less diversions that the story takes because they have nothing else for you to do, and it's it's more of the hard answers that you have to face. These these hard parts of because really honestly, I'm trying to track down killers and do all this other stuff, but they're they're being. Uh, they're, they're being forced to be subservient to these rich people who are just complete assholes. So am I really doing the right thing? I don't know. But that's that's good, though. It's good that it's making me question my own actions as I'm doing them. So. Remember why you were mad at the transitional story? <laughs> also, never turn off mount music. Felt like it was taking away something essential. Yeah. I was just kind of getting sick of the Chocobo theme, and I hadn't been able to really hear the Radiant themes from a lot of places, so I was like, maybe we'll turn it off, see if it works, but uh, it, it's it's not working as well as I hoped, anyway. So, what other game didn't have Mount Music? I'm, I'm hard-pressed to say Shadow of the Colossus, but I'm pretty sure I'm wrong, so... I recall Shadow of the Colossus' horse rides being very quiet. Mm. There's also a meme about that. Oh... <laughs> Yeah, one of the culprits was murdered, but I'm sure there was another one. Yeah, he was silenced. You know, somehow, I'm not surprised. Yeah, well, because what, what good for their good for their coin fucking evil person is going to leave any fucking witnesses? Yeah, they wouldn't want to leave any loose ends. Well, this quest is called Revolution, so some shit's about to go down, I think. Oh yeah, this is the part where the warehouse of shit hits the industrial fan. Hmm. Well, we don't need any of those accessories, so... Oh, okay. Oh, that's where Watson went. Watson went along to the Royal Promenade without me. Okay. If you were going to meet with the Queen, Watson, you should have consulted me first. I would have provided myself a change of gear. I would have changed into my, my formal attire. Hell, I changed into my formal attire when I met with the consultant. Eh? I mean, I've got my military uniform on. This is going to have to do. This is probably... I suit on, dude. Yeah, I know. I, I don't have said suit. This is probably the fanciest bit of duds that I have, though, is my monk gear. Like, my scholar gear isn't fancy so much as it's it's comfortable. Like, it, it makes it really easy to move around and cast in. This is like... I mean, I can fight in this, but it also lets me look halfway decent when I'm... I'm uh, reporting to the Maelstrom or something to that effect. So. Jesus Christ, trying to see the Sylphlands at night is fucking useless. <laughs> well, uh, on a positive note, because we're on the same Eorzean time, the sun's going to be coming up in about an hour, and by that I mean about, what would that be, like five minutes in-game? Probably not even that. Okay, Bartholomew, take me to your leader! Wow, that quest was really fucking short. <laughs> well, I didn't get quest complete, though, so... Oh, boy. Let's see what the Sultanate has to say about all this! Ugh. Well, I'm doing what I can there, General. Not doing enough, but, you know. best efforts to determine what provoked this uprising, the truth continues to elude us. Have you uncovered aught which might shed some light on the mystery? Let's see what the general knows. Excuse me. 
2.0 story quests. Only you can save the world from evil. Explore, adventure. Level 50 story quests. Walk around the city and lament how little you can do about poverty, discrimination, and the refugee crisis in an inherited, flawed political system. <laughs> that is way too accurate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I hate how accurate it is. <laughs> These are the real questions. This entire game is just like, fuck you. Literally, just screw you. You could be the hero of time, space, and everything, but you can't save humanity from humanity. I fucking hate people. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm totally the hero of this. I'm totally the hero of this story. I have to watch. I have to run around and watch an entire city crumble because I have the inability to literally just walk up and stab someone. <laughs> How so much would be completely solved if we just walked up and stabbed somebody? Seriously. Uh, if you want to know how that works, you're going to have to wait until I play Gothic 2, because, I mean, Gothic 1, you could have gotten the same idea, but most... Uh, worst comes to worst in Gothic, you if you walk up and just stab somebody, they probably will be able to kill you, because a lot of the NPCs in Gothic are pretty freaking strong, so... They flex, and then you die. They do. A unit of frost blades sent to supervise a general... I can't wait to get to Heaven's Ward and have more crippling depression. <laughs> it is a bit of a tonal shift, isn't it, Todd? <laughs> we went from felling the Empire to being unable to do anything about a political crisis. You'd think the Hero of Light would be able to do something in this situation rather than just run around and be kind of an idiot. Hmm. For God's sakes, we... At least I know who the actual culprit is, and I'm doing absolutely nothing about it. No, I'm over here trying to reason with a primal who hasn't done anything yet. <laughs> Spoilers! You don't know which primal. Ramu. They already oh, no, said. They already said the Twelves would is having problems with the primal, so obviously Ramu's going to surface something. Well, that was soon. you putting two and two together. I didn't say the name of the thing. Nope, but that's the only primal left, I think, in Gridania, so. <sighs> Oh, I had to reread this line like three times to see what she was saying. Nothing. Maybe this archer was it paid by. City which prompted the refugees to take up arms. I need not tell you what followed. Was paid by the uh, person who's behind all this. The shot heard round all da, huh? We assumed at first that the attack was born of a miscommunication. When emotions run high, they happen. But suspicions were raised regarding the unit's commanding officer, whom I ordered interrogated. And what did you find? Sure enough, our fears were soon confirmed. The dog confessed that a merchant had offered him coin to give the order. A merchant in the employ of Taleji Adeleji. Lay gasp! Taleji Adeleji. I'm assuming you know him. We know him as well, but he was actually halfway nice the last time but we saw him. he spoke in favor of the Doman's cause, and has ever seemed sympathetic towards the refugees' plight. Why would he do such a thing? And now it all comes together. Why was he sympathetic to the Domans? Because he thought he could use them as revolutionaries to overthrow the Sultanate. What an asshole! Know you of the Cartano Reclamation Bill. It is the one that they're fighting over in the front lines? So that refugees may establish permanent settlements. Oh, that's not a bad idea. It is free land. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe free's the wrong word. What, what, are you, what are you going on about over there? So, I'm running around an area, and I have to uncover a bunch of serpents, people who are being impersonated. And the person who came with me got impersonated. The line was, enough. If this is not the real person, I believe we have found a suitable replacement. <laughs> nice. <laughs> You'll see who it is when you get to this part. Oh, boy. This is way too accurate. At first, you hated that you had to do, like, 100 quests to unlock Ishgar, but when you did it, you were completely, absolutely sold. Love the change in tone. <laughs> yeah. Just upset about the ending. This was actually better than you have it, gave it credit for four years ago. Was it four years? I forget when Heaven's Ward dropped. I'm pretty sure... It, I know it dropped before I picked up the trial version. Um, and that was like 2015, so... Yeah, I guess it would be like four years ago. Four and a half, maybe. Hi. Some might the, the ending to what? These quests or a Realm Reborn? Uh, I think Todd means the ending to a Realm Reborn, but I could be wrong. Well, I mean, well, I, mean <laughs> I was a little upset about the ending, ending to War Realm Reborn. That's only because I had to sit through those fucking cutscenes a hundred fucking times. The destruction wrought by Bahamut was greatest at the Cartano Flats, 
That much is common knowledge. Right, that's where the calamity took place. The final battle before it, too. What is less well known is that his rampage laid bare ancient Alagon ruins, of which no record existed. Oh, here we go. There are certain differences of opinion as to how these ruins should be handled, which is why each nation maintains a military presence in the region to this day. And that's where the PvP comes in. Yet differ though we may, we are still allies. Therefore, in the interest of preserving the Aeorzean Alliance, we have reached an agreement. Any conflict which may arise during the course of military exercises in the region shall have no bearing on relations between our nations. So it's like an Olympic sport, basically, PvP. In full knowledge of this delicate state of affairs, Telegi Adelegi proposed the Cartano Reclamation Bill. Oh, he proposed it. Ruse, which stands to benefit him in but one conceivable way. So that he can get rid of all of our militaries in the area so that he can use the Allegan ruins? If successful, he will gain control over the disputed territory under the guise of assisting in the resettlement effort. And you can be sure he'll build an orphanage oh next to every Alagon ruin. Jesus Christ. Snowball with expansions lasted about two years. Ah, oh, okay. Gotcha. Jesus Christ, two years of, for all this content? I'd be having a meltdown if I left, got left on a cliffhanger like that one. <laughs> well, the patches, I mean, they were probably like three weeks apart for these ones leading up to Yeah, but then it's just like, you have to wait three effing weeks for a story that suddenly out of left field not only had a total shift but somehow got good also remember that the road to 60 was never a thing until like probably late stormblood so we would have been doing other quests to prepare for this stuff and there's a bunch of side quests that we haven't done like i would also imagine there was an event quest to prep you up for the new expansions mm -hmm. yeah like there's like i said there's a bunch of side quests that i've been saving for during heaven's war that we haven't done yet like there's the the hildebrand quest there's the siren quests that's another thing we're going to be doing hildebrand is like this game's version of just the gem out of left field that everyone needs to do it's like the citadel dlc from what i understand hmm. oh you mean the ending to 2.55 okay i'll understand when i get to heaven's war okay talking about the cutscenes when some important stuff happened can only imagine that the people who discovered these cutscenes at that time must have felt like such a cliffhanger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they... I'm sure that's probably why people hold Heaven's Ward in high regard, though, because it's like, you know... Own, independent of any faction, and beholden to none of his fellows on the Syndicate. Because they built it up so much. And then they probably deliver. I mean, I think I actually know what cuts off between this story and Heaven's Ward, but I don't want to say it. ...is the only viable solution. We were about to riot when you got that ending worse than the ones in the game right now. <laughs> oh boy. The domains was not but posturing to gain credibility with the refugees. Of that there can be no doubt. So it's it's just business with this guy. We need to find him so I can wring his neck. Forgive me, but what could possibly motivate Teleji Adeleji to go to such lengths? What is so special about these ruins that he would risk his position on the syndicate? And most likely, Hi, charges of treason against the Sultanate. Money, Alfie Node. Lots and lots of money from ancient Allegan relics. Omega. Or that. <laughs> or that. Mm -hmm. Did I just call it again? God damn it. An Allegan monstrosity, not unlike the Ultima weapon, may have larger. We know not. It has yet to be fully excavated. Alagon inscriptions indicate that it was created to fell Bahamut himself. Are you sure? Omega's usually created to fell Shinryu, but uh, I'm pretty sure Shinryu's also in this game, and I don't know whether or not Omega could kill him. So. If accurate, it might explain why Nail Van Darnus chose to bring the Red Moon down upon the Cartano Flats. Was he hoping to incite Omega to kill Bahamut? I thought they just wanted untold wanton destruction. Given the ends he went to to ensure Eorzea's annihilation, destroying the one weapon which could stay the Elder Primal may well have seemed like good sense. Oh, okay, so he was he was doing that because he wanted Bahamut around, so he just wanted to kill Omega by throwing a moon at him. 
you know, that didn't work for the Krogan. Hmm. Literally the worst thing waiting for him. Sport. They did not do a good job on that. Sounds like I have the Echo IRL. Yeah, well, I, I just know enough lore about the Final Fantasy series. I didn't technically call this one, though, because usually what they did, at least what they did in Final Fantasy VI, is they had the Ultima Weapon as the, like, halfway through the game boss, and then they have the Omega Weapon which is a palette swap of the Ultima weapon that you fight in the final dungeon. This is not the same Omega weapon. This is Omega, a separate entity. It's a robotic creature in the Final Fantasy series created to fell Shinryu, and it's a super boss in Final Fantasy V, though it appears in a bunch of other games, too. Um, so it's a separate entity, but it's... I was pretty damn close. When first I bore witness to the power of the Ultima weapon, I doubted the evidence of my senses. And now you tell me there is another such weapon. One which could contend with Bahamut. Bahamut! You know, that thing that we haven't done the quest for yet. <laughs> Aye. We were skeptical ourselves. Truth be told, until the Ultima Weapon's existence came to light, we thought the inscription had been mistranslated. <laughs> of course you did. Last time you were that hysterical was after the first boss of East 6. Cutscenes are so dope, they literally go out on this. Can't even imagine how you were all feeling when Heaven's Ward came out. People were ready! <laughs> Pre-release was bonkers. I imagine. If they left you off on a big cliffhanger of the magnitude that it seems like, imagine it being crazy. As such, its true potential cannot accurately be gauged. Hmm. However, if someone were to restore it, as the Carleans did the Ultima Weapon, I have little doubt that he would wield untold power. You're assuming that Omega would just let him use him willy-nilly. I'm pretty sure Omega would just wave cannon the shit out of him, and then Power there'd be... There wouldn't even be baked potato left. There'd be nothing potato left. Which is doubtless why Teleji Adeleji yearns to have it. Hmm. That he should aspire to world domination. He who has ever walked two paces behind Lord Lolorito in matters of commerce. Well, that's probably why he aspired to... Uh, world domination because he's always behind the the game here. Tis in acknowledgement of his own limitations that he seeks this power. Woe betide us all should we allow him to have it. So this is like um as if holy shit. Uh the Red Ranger, I forget his name. If he decided, well, you know, Sid is always ahead of me in terms of this airship stuff. I'm going to find the biggest airship and crash it into the airship academy because then I'll be the best. Come on, dude. What? Well, cool. Shit's, Shit's going, going down. down. Oh, boy. So what are we going to do about it? Well, we gotta Pray waste no time chasing rats. Only a fool would believe that secrets can be kept in Ulda. Hmm. It would seem the implications of the Sultanate's refugee problem are rather more far-reaching than we assumed. So far that they would have spies looking at people. People were waiting pretty damn good storytelling after that. That's an understatement. Yeah. <laughs> Red Ranger's named Nero. Oh, okay. And he had other aspirations. Beware the Red Ranger. I'm sure he'll be back. Oh, of course he'll be back. Wave Cannon is too much for him. Mash him like a mashed potato. <laughs> I don't remember if I get... Um... Because the next uh, weapon that you get in the upgrades, like right now we have Hellish Claws, which literally look like big beast claws if I showed them to you, like if I took off the Emperor's new fists. Um, they're like these big beast claws, but the next weapon that you get at the item level 110 versions for Monk are like these, it's like a cinder block that's like ornate, it has like gold trim or something on a cinder block that's like attached to your fist basically. So I would be able to mash him like a mashed potato. <laughs> So, well, on the upside, at least we won't have to deal with cliffhangers in the heavens war. Oh wait, yes we will if your little schedule is correct. Yeah, we gotta wait two streams for Heaven's Ward after uh, after the cliffhanger because I'll be playing X Five. <laughs> you fucking monster. <laughs> I mean, you can get into Heaven's Ward if you want while I'm playing X5. You'll just I mean, be a, by the time you come back a little ahead. To Heaven's Ward, you'll be entering the gates. I'll be a level 60 Dark Knight waiting for you. Hmm, probably true. 
considering how hard I go in games when I really am feeling them, and I'm feeling this one real nice right now. Holy shit! Yeah, no, I'm gonna enjoy playing X5 too, Todd. It's just that I'm basically doing an abridged version of what Square Enix did to you guys when they had you off on a cliffhanger with Heavensward. I.e., I'm an asshole. He's saying that about me. And he's right! He doesn't, doesn't get a Battleizer, though. Oh, uh, Battleizer is... what exactly? I, I don't know what a Battleizer is. Oh, I know what he's talking about. It's a thing that they use to transform, I think. I'm like 55% sure of that. Yeah, I guess I am in a good position for that, aren't I, there, Alfie? You know. Okay. Also, Jimmy, I hate to break it to you, but we're fighting another primal. I kind of figured that was going to happen. Oh, I know that kid. What is she doing here? Is she the spy that was just l listening in on us? Because I wouldn't be shocked. I was trying. I haven't had any luck yet. I do. Not well, but I do. Yeah, he was, uh, he recruited all of her loved ones, basically. Uh... No. Oh, okay. So I guess Alfie Node's gonna take care of this part of the thing, and I'm gonna go take care of the rest. Hmm. Just don't leave her hanging there, Alfie Node. I might have to... <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Miss Modi might know what to do. Oh, don't say that, because then an Assian's gonna spring out of the woodwork, man. They do that. Mm hmm What do you mean by that? Oh, hang on, my phone's ringing. Hello? Oh, okay, for what? Oh, pfft. Here we go. <laughs> Just when things were getting good with this revolution stuff, now I gotta go quell Ramu. I'm not, I'm not gonna say this bid's fucking disaster, but this bid's fucking disaster. Probably. Like, yeah, let's just totally stop, or let's just totally stop worrying about a revolution in Old Nautigo fell a primal. Hmm. We're gonna get back and the city's gonna be in flames. <laughs> Probably. There's a thing that beefed up the Red Ranger and seven or eight Power Rangers. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I remember that now. Yeah, I think it was in Mighty Morphin, if I remember right. That's the only Power Ranger series that I kept up with, unfortunately. Um, I think he had a Battleizer in that one. I wasn't thinking of the Power Ranger series as a Battleizer. I was trying to think of what a Battleizer would be in Final Fantasy XIV's lore, rather than an actual what an actual Battleizer oh, yeah, would one, be. Alphana does the thing. What thing? <laughs> the thing. We'll find out the thing. I mean, I mean you already passed, passed the point where Thancred does the thing. Does the thing. Mm. Where, he where he suddenly turns, turns into my favorite scion. <laughs> that lost because, galaxy. you know, he just started whipping knives at people like he owned the place. Mm. Yeah, I know, Todd. I, it, w it wasn't for a lack of trying, I'll, I'll say that much. It was just, I, I don't think I was ever home when a lot of the Power Ranger stuff was, was on TV. Or maybe it was on Saturday mornings and I had other stuff. Because I, I think my Saturday mornings were very full when I was younger. Like, I had karate classes and a bunch of other stuff, usually Saturday mornings. So I, di I didn't get to watch a lot of Saturday morning cartoons like other kids. No, oh, okay, fair enough. I'll pass along the message then. Well, I've got a couple of things that I can sell, but we can sell them when we get to Revenant's Toll, so... And by a couple of things, I mean these silver pieces that are burning a hole in my inventory. Which are, yeah, right there, six of them. That's like 3,000 gil, that'll come in handy. And hey, return is back on, so let's just get back that way. Nice. <sighs> oh, they weren't all good? Okay. Well, fair enough. Uh, which way am I going? That way, okay. 
Well, we'll go that way in a moment. Let me just go sell those silver pieces. I suppose I could just sell them afterwards, but, well, I'm already halfway here. So. Uh, nope, I don't need a mender. There you go. We're making our money back there, ladies and gentlemen. We're back over 200,000 gil now. Lucky you. Lucky you. Well, I'm not. I, I've already got all my glamours, so that's why I can kind of. That's why, that's why you're, you're able to have, to have money. money. <laughs> this is a first for me, though. Usually, I have no money because I just spend it all because I don't like holding on to money in these sorts of games. But uh, apparently, now I'm. I've got a small, uh, a small treasure trove. Then again, I also have a small business going basically in this game where I sell uh, white and black dyes and also glamour prisms to people who need them. At reasonable prices, as the Khajiit caravans would say. You are the worst human being, you know that? I don't make much of a profit off any one of the products that I sell, but in total, I make a, a decent chunk. Like, what did I make today? So, I spent 2,000 gil for the clear prisms that I got for the uh, for the glamour prisms that I made. I sold 10 of them on the market, 6,000 gil total. They take a tax of 300, so 5,700. So I make 3,700 gil on that. And then on the dyes, I make about between 80 and 100 gil profit on them, I think, because I only sell them for like 300 gil a pop. So it's like 85 gil, roughly. But when you're selling 10 of them, that's 850. So, I mean, I make like 4,500 gil every single day from doing that stuff. So, But then again, it's not exactly true because I... Um, I don't sell the Glamour Prisms every day because my retainers can't keep up with that and my ventures also can't, so. Yeah. Passion hunting is a soulless task. <laughs> Cole knows that pain, I'll tell you what. Let me tell you something about soulless, soulless tasks. tasks. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll die is not exactly point. safe there, Minfilia, but what's this about the Twelves wood? I never, I never at this point understood what it was like really glamouring up my characters in any video game ever because it always just came so easily before. Having to do it yourself is like agony. <laughs> I cannot physically describe how painful it is. Oh, okay, so I guess we gotta get the other scions here in order to uh, have a chat about this other uh, issue that's going on in the Twelves Wood, and all I have to see is it says Lord of Levin to know we're about to go deal with Ramu, ladies and gentlemen. It's that, it's that time, time, Jimmy. Where we have, we have to beat up the last primal, primal and then everything, everything goes to hell. Hmm. As, As if it wasn't Lord. already. Oh, you didn't Papa Lima are also here. I figured they'd be in the Twelves Wood taking care of business, but nope. Excuse me. Again, they they tried to call him before, didn't they? And it just didn't work. Yeah, because Rama was apparently the most reasonable out of the primals, and hilariously, I'm inclined to believe them. He usually is pretty reasonable. He's he's lived for thousands and thousands of eons, after all. I mean, you don't I mean, get a beard like that without knowing some shit. So. Damn right. Hmm. Right, so as long as we don't let the refugees get anywhere near the Sylphlands, he won't act. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> hmm. I sure hope so. Oh, okay, well, fair enough. <laughs> That kind of sounds like Ida, unfortunately. Uh, you still should have probably reported it, Ida. Yeah, but they didn't have to leave our our doors. They could have just told him in Philly and been like, "Okay, I'll make sure I tell I'll, I tell Jim when he gets back. He'll go take care of it." <laughs> like when it wasn't in the middle of this revolution going on in Ulda, maybe. Oh yeah, yeah, that reminds me. What? Jimmy, I don't know if I told you, and I don't know if the stream knows, but recently I did something that is, I feel like, unheard of for my current state in the story. Hmm. I broke the 10k barrier. 10k what? I broke the 10k HP barrier. Ooh, nice. Somehow, 
I did. Nice. I, I still oh, haven't man. broken the 5k HP barrier. I think I'm close, though. Like fucking easy dungeon. Oh, yeah, they do have a castrum, the Empire does, in the Sylph lands, basically, don't they? So what are we going to do about it? Strangers in the Black Shroud. Oh, God, the refugees have already gotten there. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, well, maybe if we all just got along, Ishtola, none of this shit would happen, but uh, that'll never happen, so... And what does that mean? I did, yes. It, what do you mean? Like, have a, have a friendly fireside chat with Ramu? I could probably learn a lot. Maybe he knows more about the Nymeans. Well, I mean, you know, the Nymeans are located primarily in the Wanderer's Palace, but Ramu's been around for long enough, maybe he'll know something. People can't get along IRL, why would they in video games? Yeah, Todd, I know. That's exactly correct, though I'm loath to admit it. What? People can't get along IRL, why would they in video games? Because, because video, video games, games are an escape, escape from are an escape, escape from, from reality. reality. <laughs> Unfortunately, that reality bleeds in sometimes. <laughs> like right now. So treat with Ramu and maybe they'll stop being assholes. assholes. Something tells me this isn't going to work for somebody like Ifrit or Garuda. Of course not. Garuda's fucking insane. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of on the pessimistic side with Ishtola here, so... Okay, so we gotta go to Gridania then. Okay, then I guess we're going that way. <laughs> we're we're gonna have to fight him. There's no doubt in my mind there, Minfilia. But, for the, but what reason do you think you're going to need to fight him? Find out next time on the next stream when you finally get to the end of this quest, and we have to kill an old man. <sighs> He's not actually that wrong. <laughs> Ow! Did you get tank busted? No, I just cracked my neck way too hard. Oh. Also, I am thanking whatever higher power there is. I didn't get fucking dismile for my duty roulettes. Oh. <laughs> What did I you get? I hate that dungeon because of that fucking scholar. What did you get? Uh, first dungeon. Oh, Sas Dasha. Yeah. 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 Thank, Thank fuck, fuck something easy that I don't need to like have a meltdown over. Yeah, like I was telling you earlier, it, it's kind of it's kind of um, a relief and a reprieve almost sometimes when you're doing your daily stuff and you do like trials or something and you have to figure out, you know, make sure you know the mechanics and all that stuff. And then you can go into leveling and just turn your brain off for a half an hour because you just okay, all I need to do is. Spam physic. And you know, it's unfortunate. I would have loved to turn my brain off yesterday, but unfortunately that fucking scholar was expecting raid level tanking from somebody who probably just didn't want to get off for the knife. Fucking asshole. <laughs> I will say this, though. I had a really good experience with, uh, with Moggle Mog um, a few nights ago when I was doing my... Tr when I did my trials daily. Um, which one? This one. Uh, I had a good experience with this with a, a team because there were like four or five new people in the group and I had no freaking idea really about the mechanics that I had fought him. This was the second time I was fighting him. So there, the veterans in the group had some grasp on the mechanics of the fight, but not really entirely. So we all ended up basically figuring out how the mechanics of Mogomog worked at the same time. We're like, okay, so we have to do this and this and this. And we died. Like, we wiped like three or four times before we got it. But, um, yeah, it, it was a good experience because I actually got to do what I usually like to do in games where I you know, fight something and I observe it, basically. I die a few times and I say, okay, this is what I need to do to avoid this death, and I go a little closer, a little closer, a little closer, and then it just all works, so. It just works. In that case, it did, so. Uh, I need to teleport to Gridania instead of just blabbing off at my mouth. Instead of just using your mouth. I can't wait till I get the next four or five roulettes. <laughs> yeah, there is a bunch of other roulettes after these three, isn't there? Upside. Upside. At, least At least we have more dailies to do it by extension. More money! 
Yeah, but once you get your glamours together, are you going to need money? I mean, of course. Hmm. Because both of you to assume that both of my glamours are complete. I don't have a weapon for Red Mage yet. Oh, well, I mean, you could just use the, the best one that you can get. Well, I mean like a glamour weapon to put over the best one. Oh, uh, okay. Once I, I don't know what I'm going to get because I know that like 95% of Red Mage's good weapons are in King Heaven's Ward. <laughs> Actually, I'm pretty sure they're in Stormblood because that's when Red Mage was introduced. Rip. Well, I know they would make new weapons for Red Mage in freaking heaven. Oh yeah, there's there's there is weapons from 50 to 60 for Red Mage. I don't know. They're probably added. They were probably added to the the vendors or something. But well, you know. Well, right. So what can we do about this this primal? No, oh, okay. Alright, so we gotta go to Nafika's altar, so let's head that way. And I think after we speak to the Elder Seeds here and find out what we're gonna do about Ramu, we'll call it a day. Okay, because I'm actually kind of hungry. <laughs> That's like half the reason why I say we should end the streams off, is because I'm starving. <laughs> Are we almost done? I'm hungry. I mean, I don't bitch about being hungry on the stream, and I also don't eat on stream because I'm a professional. <laughs> kind of. Notice the kind of. Mm. Yes, please. Take me to the Lotus Stand. Or Strand. I still don't know which is which. Lotus Stand. Okay. I'm going to do that every time we go in here, though. I'm going to be like, which is it? Stand or Strand? Because I wasn't paying attention. And then it's going to load in. And I'm going to be like, oh, okay, Stand. I'll remember that. And then, I, and then I won't remember it. So. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we got to do here. Scions of the Seventh Dawn. On behalf of the people of Gridania... I bid you welcome. Your presence is of great comfort to us all in these days of uncertainty. See, I still don't get why they do this, though. Like, the Sultan, the Sultana does this, and Connie Senna's doing it now, and she's done it in the past, where they talk like there's an audience. I mean, I know the soldiers are here, but she's not speaking to a crowd of people, you know? You don't have to speak like you're public speaking. I think it's something to do with sort of like a speech dialect thing because they're royalty. They need to like practice talking to a crowd at all times so it sort of becomes habit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I guess that could be. Is in its intensity. Ramu is returned unto the forest. Yeah, I guess we figured that part. Scarce had his words ceased to echo in mine ears when we were visited by an emissary from Little Solace. Oh, uh, maybe... Is it Kamuxia, maybe? Can you call her? It creeps me out. Jaeger's gonna be creeped out with no so way of seeing us, us, but... Us yeah, I'll close it. I'll close it. The presence of the Lord of Levin. Probably the, the touched sylphs were the ones that summoned well, him, then. Exactly As a matter of fact, they're the only ones that could unknown. summon him, so... We may I think. safely assume that the primal <clears throat> was summoned within the heart of the sylphlands. Unlike the other primals you have encountered, Lord Ramu is no raging avatar of destruction. He is revered as much for his wisdom as his strength, serving as both arbiter and guardian to his children. Sounds like the Sylph's got Even the long end of the stick. Found a way to share the Twelve's wood. It is my hope that this sagely immortal will be amenable to reason, and that conflict may be avoided. Okay, well, this sounds a little easier than some of the other primals. As a matter of fact, it doesn't even sound nearly as urgent as the revolutionary stuff I just came from. Well, you see, here's the problem. They're going to make you go off and deal with Ramu in this game because they need time for everything to go directly to hell. I would ask, therefore, that you represent us in this most delicate of negotiations. Okay, then. The Twelves Wood has suffered enough. Upon this, we and the Sylphs, and I would venture Lord Ramu himself, are in perfect accord. Let us not endanger our shared home by engaging in unnecessary hostilities. Alright, so we'll go have a chat then with Ramu Dear and see friend, what we I can do. You. Safeguard the peace which exists between our peoples. Okay then, guess I can do that. You have my thanks. So why doesn't the Sylph get a voice here? 
Are they just not know what voice actor to pick for this uh, sprite person? A member of the Order of the Twin Adder awaits you there. He will advise you on how to find the Lord of Levin. Okay then. Guess we've got a plan. All we gotta do is carry it out. I wonder if it's the dark wind. It is the dark twelve's wood that flinches at its coming. All the lands of Eorzea shiver in dread anticipation. Have care. I'll try, although I think the wind you're talking about is probably coming out of Teleji's asshole. Because he's trying to fart in our general direction with Omega. That that metaphor was going somewhere, but then I, I totally just didn't go anywhere with it. Anyway, we have to make our way to Little Solace in order to uh, check in with that uh, Order of the Twin Adder representative so we can see what we can do about this Ramu situation. Will we be able to meet with him and convince him to stand down in terms of the uh, refugees, I guess, in the Sylphland, since they're the ones that seem to have caused the Sylphs to go batshit and want to summon him a little bit quicker? And will we find out what's going on with this refugee situation in Alda? Find out on the next episode of Final Fantasy XIV The Stream Edition. Except probably not the latter one because we're probably going to get to Ramu, fight him and then maybe look into this revolution thing? I really don't know. Or something's going to go horribly wrong in Limsa next. There's, there's a lot going on right now and I have no idea where it's going to lead but there's only one way to find out. So thank you for watching everybody. I appreciate you coming out to Twitch and YouTube to check out the stream. And I will see all of you on the next one, which will be on Thursday, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Until then, everybody, take care, and have a good night. Peace. You can hang up the Discord call now. <laughs>